And thank you for joining us for today's Dealer on Webinar, Lead Handling Like a Rockstar 2.0. My name is Eliana Raggio, and I'll be your moderator today. And today's webinar is being presented by Dealer on. For anyone who isn't familiar with Dealer on, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, best known for our amazing SEO, the best customer service, and the highest converting website designs in the industry, including the award-winning Chameleon Responsive Website Platform. After the last NADA, we were awarded the Driving Sales Dealer Satisfaction Award for top-rated websites for an unprecedented sixth year in a row. We also took home the AWA Award for Best Websites for a third time. Plus, FCA announced that we're now an approved vendor. Big things are happening over here at Dealer on this year. We're still the only company in the industry that offers a money-back lead guarantee program. Do you want to know more? <laughs> yeah, you do. You can check us out at our gorgeous brand new Dealer on website at dealeron.com. Hey, I want to let you know the beard and the hair. They're headed back to Vegas this October 21st to the 23rd to host some sweet breakout sessions at the Driving Sales Executive Summit. It's at the illustrious Bellagio, and they're going to be co-presenting, and I love the name of this, Dr. Feelgood's Rockin' Prescriptions to Keep Your Digital Marketing Off the Crazy Train. <laughs> you don't want to miss that. It's all about getting your SEO and your PPC strategies ready for 2018. So don't miss it. And by the way, groups of four or more going to DSES, you can get your dealerships $100 off of each ticket. All you have to do is go check it out at DSES.com. We have a great show in store for you today. We have the one and only Bobby Heron as our presenter today. Bobby Heron is responsible for the creation and implementation of digital marketing strategies and conversion best practices for dealers at Zmot Drive, an exclusive automotive dealership operations, lead handling, and CRM consulting solution. Bobby has spent over 16 years enjoying a diverse automotive career and various responsibilities within a retail dealership including general manager before coming to Zmot. Bobby now focuses her time on assisting dealers nationwide and in increasing their ROI in every de department through consulting efforts. She's a very popular presenter at numerous conferences including Digital Dealer, Women in Automotive and Driving Sales and she's also a guest lecturer at Northwood University and a named winner of the 2015 Automotive News 40 Under 40. Bobby can be reached at bheron at zmotauto.com Dot com. And by the way, Bobby is going to be at the upcoming Women in Automotive Conference. This amazing event is December 10th through the 11th in Palm Springs. It's going to be focused on training and retaining women in our industry to improve their skills, advance their careers, and find the highest levels of success. If you want to make your way to Palm Springs in a few weeks, well, heck, we'd love to see you. I'm going to be there, too. I'm going to be the MC for this fine event. So to find out more about the Women in Automotive Conference, please visit womeninautomotive.com. We really hope we see you there. And during this presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, we're going to try to respond by email later today. Don't forget, a link to download a copy of this webinar recording will also be emailed to you later today for your reference. Feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. And guess what? Our good friends at Zmot Drive, wow, they're giving away a great prize on today's webinar. One, only one of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win a Nintendo Switch. Oh, this is Love the that. game on the market. I, I just, I have to tell you, when my son bought it, he bought it with his own money, he literally on the drive home from Best Buy said, this is the happiest day of my life. And it could be <laughs> the happiest day of your life too. All you have to do is be the first one to answer our giveaway question correctly and you could win this sweet, sweet prize. So stay tuned and who knows, you might be the one walking away with this awesome prize today. Also, at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to get a short survey, so fill it out. We're always looking for quality feedback from our audience. We want your opinion to be heard. And hey, do you tweet much? Gosh, we hope you do. We'd love to see what you have to say about today's presentation, so please tag us in it. You can use hashtag DealerOnWebby. I'm at Eliana Raggio. You can also hit up Bobby Heron at Sign on the Line. We look forward to seeing what you're saying. All right, everyone, let's get started. Let's learn lead handling like a rock star. 2.0. Bobby Heron, how are you, girl? I am fantastic. I wish that I could control the slides at the timing that you say them every time. You'd think after like 70 times of practice I would have that down, but not so much. 
You did great. Now, for those of you who might not know this, Bobby was here, I think it was more than a year ago, or maybe about a year ago, and she actually did lead handling like a rock star. So she's coming at us now with not only an updated version, but also she's going to be hitting on more precise things. You know, hers, the first one was more of a general overview. You should definitely still check it out, though, because it is amazing presentation. This one has completely different stuff in it. So that you came today, 2.0, this is a legit 2.0. We're taking it a deeper dive into all of the awesomeness that she covered before, and she might even update some of the things that she had said about a year ago. So, Bobby, we got some anxious people on here. Tell people what we're going to be learning about today. Oh, my goodness. Well, so to start out, guys, this is going to oh be my crazy gosh. because <laughs> I cannot in my life seem to not overachieve at things. So today we are going to talk about your mindset and getting uncomfortable. We're going to talk about responsive versus non-responsive leave, establishing the beginning goals that you have, how to create an action plan for each segment, how to customize the conversations where process gets personal, and identify what to start with. We're going to give away a Nintendo Switch because who doesn't love a cool price? And then you guys can ask me anything you want. So as you hear something while we go, send the question in. We'll get to as many as we can at the end. And if we miss any, I'll personally reach out and answer them for you. So don't be afraid of that. We're going to start with a couple legal disclaimers right out of the gate. If you've heard me speak before, you'll be familiar with some of these. I did not know we had legal disclaimers at the beginning of this, but I'm excited yeah, to see what, yeah. we're, what we're disclaiming. <laughs> All right. Well, first, I am not Willy Wonka. I don't sugarcoat things. So I will tell you right out of the gate that if your feelings get hurt easily, I'll give you a hug if you see me in person. But I would suggest some self-awareness and some tissues. I'm not one to tell you that you're doing a great job. That's your wife's job, your husband's job, your friend's job. It's my job to help you make more money. So. If I'm talking about something and you think to yourself, oh my God, I can't believe she said that, I was probably talking to you, and instead you should say, oh damn, I can't believe she knew I did that, and fix it, okay? <laughs> also, I talk fast, really fast, so here's what I've done for you guys. You're going to get a recording, also attached, there's a couple handouts. One of them is a printout of the screen, so that you can come back and write notes down. The content I'm bringing you is like a five-hour presentation, jam-packed into an hour, so do not comment later, God, she talks too fast, I'm warning you up front. Uh, no, so I put a lot of content on these screens. That's not something that I normally do, mostly because Greg Gifford tells me that every time I put bullet points in a presentation, I'm killing kittens. He says that because I like kittens, right? <laughs> uh, but I will get made fun of on unthinkable levels for the amount of content that leaves on these screens. So I'm risking my street cred for you guys. Don't let it be in vain. Print them out, go back to them, and use them as you need to. Okay, so, I'm not oh, yeah, sure any of that was legal disclaimers. disclaimers, but I love it. <laughs> I feel like you paid more attention because I said it was legal, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> I totally paid attention. I was like, where is she going with this? All right, let's go. <laughs> All right, so what is lead handling like a rock star? A rock star means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. You could be like jamming out with some classic rock. I'm doing an air guitar right now and you can't see it. But what it really means is it's a mindset and a characteristic. Things like I'm going to lead like a rock star. We're going to start out with a quote because I'm girly like that and I think quotes are important. I think this is Socrates, maybe, but you never really know. It could be a Kardashian. But it's important to remember this as we go. The secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on finding the old, but on building in the new. I say that to you guys because many of you on the call have wanted to change things and weren't allowed, quote unquote, allowed to in your dealership. Many of you asked for permission instead of forgiveness. And I'm going to put you through some things that seem basic all the way to advanced. I'm going to remind you as we do this that if you're a baseball fan, I'm a baseball fan, we do not win baseball games by hitting home runs. We win them by hitting, hitting steals and hitting base hits. So the little things, the things that really matter, that's what adds up to big. If there was a bullet point, a magic thing, if I threw out some magical thing that made everybody amazing, everybody would have it. You've got to put the work in. So let's start with this. Perception is reality, a lead versus an opportunity. Seriously, stop calling these things leads. These are people. They're not leads. And once you get into the mindset that a lead is different than the person walking in the store, you will treat them differently. If you're saying to yourself, I already know this, then you should be at 78% close ratio. It's not always you that we're worried about, right? It's somebody beyond you. If you find you're in your store and you hear things like, did you get all the leads out of the bucket? Did you answer all the leads from yesterday? How about all those leads from this morning? What about that lead that just came in? You would not have somebody walk into a showroom floor and say something like, see the lead at the store in the red hat? See him walk in the door? It's ridiculous. Stop it. You're changing your mindset. These are the same customers. Perception is reality. The leads are bad. Are they bad? These are the common things that I hear from the stores. These are bad. It's a bad source. It's not a bad source. You convinced yourself it was a bad source because either couldn't cherry pick it or it took a different kind of work. 
I'll tell you what it really is. It's that the conversation isn't customized. The only time a lead has a bad source is if somebody didn't actually send it in, meaning their 16-year-old kid sent it in, their dad, their dad grandpa sent it in, an angel sent it in, whatever it is. When a person raises their hand and says that they're an opportunity, that's not a bad buyer. It just not, might not be a today buyer. We don't have the car. This is the most common thing I see. And I see it in every store I go into. Well, Bobby, uh, we didn't have the car. Well, that's awesome. Did you reach out to find out why? What were they looking for in the car? What did they need? And I'm not talking about the old school, you know, what color do you like, light or dark? Do you want a two-door or a four-door? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about over 50% of people, of buyers, switch vehicles. People will travel for the experience they have when you live too far away. I promise you they will. I watch it happen every day. I train on it every day. Do not get stuck in a mindset that if a lead, an opportunity, a lead, I'm going to say lead during this just so you guys can reference it, sends in a vehicle and an opportunity in and you don't have the car, don't look at it and say, I can't help that customer. They likely have switched to that car. There are not products out there that make it easy for customers to search cars. I don't care what anybody says. If I want Bluetooth and navigation, I can't go online and say, these are the two important things to me, show me the cars. Instead, where I can go and say that shows me 300 cars in somebody's inventory. But it doesn't say here's the make and model. People switch cars. Find out what they want and work that one even harder because if a customer sent you in an exact car, they're lower down the funnel. They don't live too far away, people. Last week, we Ubered a customer from an airport to a dealership, and the price difference was only $500. They just hated the local dealer. Don't get caught in those things. <laughs> buyers are different. Your buyers aren't different, right? We always say things like buyers are liars. I hear people say that still all the time. Buyers aren't liars. They don't want you to sell them on stuff. They don't want to be lied to. You. They don't want to have a stereotype. You guys are stereotypes, and I'm sorry, but it's the truth. It doesn't make a buyer a liar if they put something to the side and omit something, and that mindset will give you an excuse for stuff you shouldn't have an excuse for. They know more these days. Of course they know more these days. They're looking online. They're doing their research. But do they really know more? Because they used to go dealership to dealership to five to six different places and get that same information. The only difference now is that they can do it from the comfort of their own home on their couch while they're watching a movie with their kids. They don't respond. Of course they don't respond. Have you seen the shit you sent them? If I see one more template go out that says something like, hey, great inquiry on that car. We're open tomorrow till 6. What time can you come in? Uh, no, that's not really an option, right? We're going to talk about basic versus advanced. It, we live in a click-and-go society. Right now, I can click anything in seconds and get an answer, get a conversation started. So if you're using an OEM-approved training company that's teaching you the same thing as they're teaching your neighbor down the street, people aren't responding because they don't feel like you're having a real conversation with them. It's also about convenience. If you're call, doing all your follow-up and calls back at 9 o'clock in the morning every single day, because it's convenient for you, maybe the problem is that it's not about being convenient for you. It's about you cutting them when it's convenient for them. Some of you are going to listen to this presentation and you're going to lie to yourself the entire time. You'll convince yourself that you can't instead of figuring out how you can. I'm going to ask you not to do that. Find solutions to the roadblocks you have. We still have control in the buying process. Don't let somebody tell you we don't. It just looks different in 2017 than it did in 1985. Stop controlling the workarounds and instead control the experience, and it will become a different factor for you, okay? Now, you might say to yourself right now, that's great, Bobby, but I don't have time. Why don't you have time? I'm a one-woman, one-man show. I have to chase people all day. I do everybody's job because they don't get done. Let me let you in on a secret. All that stuff that you're running around doing isn't making you any more money. So you either have to be more efficient in what you're doing, or you have to raise your hand, sit at the table, and say, this is not how we do it. You have to work smarter, not higher. Harder. Your CRM is your best friend. It's not your enemy, right? I'm going to tell you, if your reasoning is I'm not allowed to, they won't let me. It's not allowed. They're all old school. They don't get it. I tried that, but nobody follows through. Listen, ask for forgiveness instead of permission. Your career purpose is to talk people into doing things. That's what you get paid to do. Your GM, your manager, that person standing in your way of accomplishing more, they're your customer. Sell them. Sell it. It's, more, it's not more important to be right than it is to win. If you want to accomplish something, check your ego. It doesn't matter if anybody gives you credit for it or not. The end goal is that the outcome is still the same. Sell them and get them out of your way. All right. Let's make a deal. I love these little comments. We're going to resolve every conflict in the company right now. You guys are going to see these as we switch topics through them. They're sarcastic because I'm sarcastic, but they're also right. And I know this is what you deal with because I'm on the floor all the time and I've done all your roles. So I'm empathetic to those things. So let's make a deal. 
I want you to identify the first roadblock that you have in your store. You can do it now as we go through the presentation, whatever it is. The one thing you feel like is stopping you from getting to the next level, if it's an I don't have time or I'm not allowed to, find a solution and commit to implementing it within seven days. And I mean, if the manager won't let you have a card pulled up, if you're not allowed to say who the salesperson is when you set the appointment, if you have to hand it to off to the manager when somebody comes in, if you're entering the showroom visits for somebody because they're not doing it, figure it out, come up with a solution, and implement it right now because it's the only way that you're going to make a change. So we're going to get rolling. Eliana, let's start with the poll question. I think that's a great idea, audience. We have three poll questions for you today. Our first poll question is on the screen now, and we would love it if you got involved. We want to know what's happening in your dealership and what you're experiencing wherever you are in the country, so please make sure you answer this poll question for us. We want to know, do you know how many leads, or as Bobby said earlier, opportunities, you had last month that never responded to you? Please select one of the following answers. Why would I need to know that? <laughs> I honestly don't know. No, but I know exactly where to find them. I'm a great guesser, so I kind of know. Or, of course I know. Data is my jam. Once I get a majority of the votes in, <laughs> we're going to close this poll and share the results. And by the way, um, <clears throat> I wanted to give a shout out to Katie who, when you were giving your disclaimers, said, these are all the reasons that I love Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. that and it. then, I know, I know. And, and then Angie wrote in um, uh, the slide right after the disclaimers where you said, you know, stop making excuses and all that stuff. Um, uh, Angie says, I've been saying all of this forever. I love this presentation already. Um, Bobby, I'm looking forward to connecting with you. So thank you very much for that comment, oh, Angie. Well. Huh? I said thanks, Angie. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, audience today is on it. Oh, we're going to give you a couple more seconds to answer this question, and then we will close the poll and share the results. Do you know how many leads you had last month that never responded to you? So pick one of those answers and let's go. Bobby, get a sip of water real fast. We're going to get through these answers together. Here we go. Audience, thank you so much for your votes. We're closing this poll now and sharing those results. Let's see what we have going on. Okay, no one on this call, because I have a very smart audience, Bobby, I don't know if I told you that before, but no one on this call says, why would I need to know that? Thank you very much, audience, for proving my point. 22% of today's audience say they honestly don't know how many leads last month never responded to them. So thank you for being honest. The majority, yeah, however, 36% of today's audience say no, but they know exactly where to find it. So there you go. 11% of today's audience say that they're a great guesser, so they kind of know. And then the remaining 31% of today's audience, so almost a third of today's audience, say, of course I do. Data is my jam, which means that if almost a third of today's audience say that they actually do know, then that means two-thirds of today's audience, in some way or another, actually don't know. So, Bobby, I'm going to ask you, is that something that every salesperson needs to know? Absolutely. Every salesperson, every BDC person, every general manager, sales manager. You know, Eliana, I asked this question because uh, my teaching method is a little unconventional, or so I hear. Right? I polish it up a little bit. But possible. I, I believe that if we teach people the why behind things, it changes the conversation. It next level, as Jennifer Briggs always says, that's her hashtag, next level. It next levels the game. If I walk in and say, hi, guys, I'm going to teach you how to write 75 templates like a rock star and hit the send button, I'm not doing you a favor. I'm creating business for myself later that's scalable. I'm not about scalability. I'm not about winning. I'm about doing it right. And so this question is going to play into the next part of our conversation. So I'm, I'm not surprised by the results, uh, but I love how they came out. Yeah, and, and William wrote in, he's like, Bobby, always know your why. Absolutely. All right. Let's go, yeah. Bobby. What else we got to get to? All right. Okay, so we're about to go into a whole lot of different stuff, guys. We're going to break this up into a couple segments. So lean with me as we go. If you end up having to drop off early, I'll make sure you get the recording. But we're going to go through a bunch of stuff, and the first is going to be the why. There's the, here's the thing. When people come in and tell you, or you sit in a classroom or a session, and people say, the OEM comes in and they say things to you like, the average region is at 18% of closing. You guys need to get your closing up. I call bullshit. 
that is a that is an escape though, that is an excuse. How do you know if closing is the problem if you don't actually break down the numbers? You can't get better at this until you identify where your break is, and we're gonna talk about a couple of them. Starting with, you can't manage what you don't measure. There are two buckets for conversion when it comes to leads. Do you have a, we'll use easy numbers here, guys, even though I'm gonna use crazy ones, they're easy. Let's say you have a thousand people that come in, right, and leads, quote unquote leads that came into your system, or phone calls that you're answering. There's two different buckets there. There's one that engaged with you, either they answered your call, they responded to your message, your text, that's a different conversation for legal, watch for one of those later, or they didn't respond. Those are the two buckets of people. And we know for a fact right now that inside of those two buckets, the people who engaged is somewhere between 20 and 30% of your total, but what about the 70% that didn't engage? What about the whole audience that you're missing? Those are two different points of reference for correction. So we have bucket one, the people who engaged. These are the breakdown numbers. Write these down, print this screen, because these are action plans for you for later, and they identify exactly where your break is. Stop looking at it as an overall and how do you fix it, and start micro-targeting where the cracks in your foundation are. So bucket one, they engaged. How many people actually engaged? How many set an appointment? How many were confirmed? How many showed up? How many sold? If you're listening to me and you're like, oh, I look at those all the time, do you look at the breakdown? Because how many people set an appointment off of how many engaged tells you if you're getting the right information, if you're asking for the appointment every time, if you're getting too much. Always be transparent, but stop over giving information. Stop using templates from the, these OEM approved people, and I'm not gonna call anybody out on it because I don't compete with them, right? Compete with myself, but I'm gonna tell you if you're creating an objection in your first response, if you're saying something to a customer like, how many miles per year do you need? Uh, what rebates might you qualify for? Um, this is the pricing on it. I don't care how confident you sound or not, you just created an objection that you now have to deal with either in the BDP or by the salesperson because the question you asked didn't elicit a response you were looking for. We have to create real conversations. Confirmations, huge, huge in confirmations. I use a VIP confirmation process. It's massive. It works really well, but I'll tell you what, if you're not confirming your appointments, game over. Think about the last time you made an appointment at the doctor, the hair salon, the dentist, the dog grooming place. They remind you because people forget. Also, if I call and confirm an appointment, let's talk about buy-in for a minute. I call and confirm an appointment, the customer might say to me on the phone, yeah, I'm not going to make it in. Go to the service the customer. Why not? Well, I stopped at another dealer last night, and I got my trade-in appraised, and it turns out I owe a little bit more on it than I thought. I stopped at a dealer last night and they gave me a payment. Why are we letting another dealership control our win? Do not bet on other people, bet on yourself. A confirmation is so much more than a reach out to a customer. How many people showed up off of the set appointment? Why is that number important? It's hugely important because it could have something to do with either the way you were talking or they stopped at another dealership, they got different information. How many sold? Some of you are in control of the sold counts in your store because you're involved in the process and some of you are not empowered to be involved in that process and you have no control other than getting people to show up. Are you making a customer service call when an unsold customer leaves? If the customer leaves that showroom, are you making that call? And I don't mean are you selling the car, I mean are you saying something like this. Eliana, I see that you were in yesterday, I'm so glad that you were able to make it in after our conversation. Did you take your car home? You already know that they didn't take their car home, that's why you're calling them, right? Did you take your car home? No, I didn't. Oh my goodness, why not? And stop, control still looks the same, first person who talks loses. Stop and ask the question because people are likely to actually give you a real answer if you stop thinking about workarounds and you continue to think about real, genuine conversations and find out the undercover objection. I'll tell you the next step is not just to put it in the CRM and then to go tell somebody what the objection is, it's to track it. You think that your sales manager isn't getting the job done or a salesperson? It's not gonna be just data that gets that person off of your leads or off of setting the appointment, I promise you. It's going to be proof of both analytical da data and then real sales process. If I can say, I had 17 appointments set for James this month, he PO'd none of them, I talked to the customers every single time afterwards, and the eight who didn't buy all gave me the same feedback. They didn't test drive the car. They pulled in and they had to wait for him. You have to start looking at the real why for buy-in if you're going to get things to be changed. Bucket two, and this is the bucket I wanna focus on a lot with you guys today. I'm gonna to give you little bits and pieces of everything, but here's the thing, this is 80% of your opportunities sitting in your CRM right now of that you have to work with. These are the people that did not respond to you. So these are pretty important. What is the breakdown? How many leads never engaged or responded to your attempt? They never called you back. They never sent you back an email. Also, people, what is your average response time in minutes? 
I'm not talking about an autoresponder. I'm not talking about Robin Peter to pay Paul so everybody feels the pat on their back. I'm saying realistically, in your store, how long did it take you to respond? And here's the kicker, guys. I don't care if you were open or not. Stop gauging yourself by when you were open. You're giving yourself a workaround that you can't make an improvement off of. Yes, that number is important. You're saying to yourself, Jesus, Bobby, you want me to answer these at 2 a.m.? Kind of. But that's not really realistic. But I'll tell you what, if I answer a lead at 11 o'clock at night that sends me something for consulting and they send it to somebody else, I promise you I'm the one calling them back at 11 o'clock at night and I'm saying something like this. Uh, hey, Eliana, I'm so sorry to call you so late, but I just saw that your information came through. I was wondering if you wanted to chat about it right now or if you'd like to schedule a time tomorrow to talk about it. I'm giving the customer the choice. If you send me something at 11 p.m., I assume that you're not busy. There are vendors out there that you can hire. My company does not do this, so that's not a sales pitch. So we'll answer your things overnight or for crying out loud, if you're watching a movie, just send a response from your phone. Everything is mobile these days. Know what your average response time is in minutes. Okay? You have to know that to know how successful you are. Personalized, just so we're clear, a personalized response means you did not send a template that you did not write without customizing it. You know, plug and play templates from your CRM. You know, these companies bringing you in this crap that they put into your system and tell you to send. A template to me is a template if you didn't write it. You want to write a bank of templates that showcase your personality, that you know that they work. Those aren't templates. Those are pre-created conversations. How many first responses did you give that were personalized? Do this, guys. Look into this data. These are where your cracks in the foundation are, and these are where you want to fix them. How many of the first responses you sent did you actually personalize? Not hit a button, not remove the red text, have a real conversation with. I'm going to show you some examples today. What percentage of the time that a customer asked a question in the initial lead did you address it in the first response? Please say to me, geez, Bobby, how am I going to figure that out? Easy. Look back through your leads and see how many of them that didn't respond asked an actual question. And we know this is a very small percentage. I'm going to make it up. Maybe it's 10%. I don't know. It's usually 1 out of 10 to 12 that we see that have a real question. But when they asked it, did your first response have it? Or did you send them an autoresponder like the other six dealers get caught in their email and then they didn't open the next one because you gave no value in the first one, right? How many times did you attempt personalized follow-up past seven days? If I send you in a lead right now, in seven days, did you do it? And listen, if you're on the call going, we do that every single time. So listen, I'm not challenging you publicly to give your numbers, but I'm telling you, I promise you, it's not happening as often as you think. So invest in yourself. Invest in your own success and inspect what you expect and go back and see how many times personalized contact was attempted. Phone call or an email that was written. Lastly, in this bucket, in order to gauge where your cracks are, how many times did you follow up past 21 days with a personalized response? It's 180 day, days, guys, 180 days that a customer will be looking at a vehicle. It used to be 18 to 19 hours online. It's 14 to 15 hours now. Just give that some thought. You don't know if that lead came in on day two of their investigation or day 166. And before you say to yourself, I don't have time, remember what we talked about in the beginning. This is a Ferris wheel of customers. We'll delve more into that. So this is the most important thing that you can have on here because everything plays off of what bucket are you trying to fix. And the fixes we talk about live in each one of these. All right. What the details. I love this because I say this a lot. I used to work for this guy, and uh, I didn't really like him very much. But he used to always say to me, Bobby, you need to sweat the details. In my whole life, I had been told, don't sweat the details, dude. It's good. No sweat the details. The name, the source, the history, know what they are before you call a customer. BDCs and salespeople, I come into stores to consult and train on this, and people say to me all the time, well, Bobby, it's got to be fast. Quality and quantity, guys. Quality and quantity. I might not know the trim level of the car or if the car is here, but it's not going to matter if the customer doesn't answer the phone because it takes me too long. I'm going to be honest with a customer and say, you know what, I'm not sure, but I'm going to check on that for you. That's the conversation I'm going to have. So when we talk about putting the details, let's talk about the beginning of it on the top. This is a VIN solution screen, but it's similar in any one of the CRMs that you use. This is my friend Jennifer Briggs up here. And you can see when she sent in her lead, her opportunity, her name was a little jacked up. So you might think to yourself, I fix those all the time. In fact, what you expect, guys, I walk into 30 dealerships a month that do this, and I'm telling you, even the best, it's a problem there. So if I don't change the name and fix it, what happens? This nice little email that's automated in my system or that I push the button to send out makes Jennifer's name look funny. You might think, that's ah, a small detail. People love their name. You know what else that does? It tells me that you sent me a template, and I don't care if I'm buying a $1,000 car or a $50,000 car. If you can't do something as simple as type me an email, I don't want to do business with you. And that's how people are feeling. It's a 10-second fix. 
click the button, change the name, update it, and do it the minute a lead comes in so that you're not dealing with it in the future. Right? What kind of buyer is this? Again, I'm using a VIN screen, but you can do this in almost any CRM. And if your CRM doesn't do it, find out how it does. It comes over in the XML format, so if it's not showing you, it's in there somewhere. But what kind of buyer do you have? You can see down here that it says source. Are you sending the right message? I will tell you that nine out of 10 stores that I walk into, I ask them, do you know what all your sources are? Sometimes they say yes, sometimes they say no. Never can they tell me exactly what a customer saw. And I don't just mean the BBC, I mean the entire team. If you want to create a real experience where somebody not only communicates, but they buy from you, you have to know all the details before they get there, right? You have to know what they need. If it's an OEM lead that comes in, typically they're researching models in comparison. If it's a third party lead, it's typically research and pricing. If it's on your website, it's two times the actual rate of a close because typically we're looking at the actual vehicle. That doesn't mean you can't switch the car, but all of these things contain different sourcing and all of them are present in your CRM, right? So you gotta break it down. Bobby, why, I think that's a waste of time. Why do I need to do that? Well, here's why you need to do it. Let's say that a customer comes into the showroom and they've never been online. We know that's not true, but let's get crazy here for a minute and get out of our comfort zone. Customer comes in on the lot, they come up with the salesperson. The salesperson does their typical, hi, you're here for a big sale today. And the customer's like, am I an art man? Like, that's not a thing. Customer says to the salesperson, oh, no, I'm just kind of looking at a car. We can have that whole conversation. But imagine if the customer walked up to you, handed you a piece of paper and said, here's all the information you need to know about me. By the way, I'm a trade-in buyer. Let me just, like, stop time for a second and chill right here while you do some research and get back to me. That's not unrealistic. They're doing it right now. If I know that you're a trade buyer, I know not to focus on the car and instead to focus on your trade. I'm not going to create an objection about having to give you a price on your trade over the phone. I will if you ask me for it in an educated conversation. But what I want to know is when you get into the showroom and we start to negotiate pricing because every customer feels like they need to win, and I say to the customer, says to me, well, the payment's $20 too high. That salesperson goes back to the desk to negotiate the payment on the car, comes back, negotiates the payment, and then the customer says, well, what about my trade? And the salesperson's like, damn it, I just reduced the price of the car. But if I knew that it was a trade in buyer, I would have over allowed on the trade to get that payment down, and now we only have to have one conversation. Same thing happens with an internet lead that's coming in and you're creating a conversation with them. If I know that you're a trade in buyer, that's my focus. Guess what? We're looking for vehicles like those. Guess what? There was this massive floods around the entire country. And so good news for you, Mr. Customer. People from other states are coming to our state to buy our inventory because they can't replace theirs which has caused a surge in the need for your vehicle. That's not a lie, guys. It's absolutely true. But I don't know that unless I looked at the source for the customer. I'll even say to a customer on the phone when they say, well, the dealer down the street gave me pricing on my trade. I'll say to a customer, that's unfortunate. They'll say, what do you mean that's unfortunate? That's unfortunate because what they did is they gave you a guess. Now, Mr. Mrs. Customer, I'm willing to do the same thing. You've already thought when you sent it in, whether it was a KDB, a trade-in evaluator, whatever it was that they went to, they've already either seen a range or an exact. And I'm going to be honest with the customer, always honest. Eliana, as my customer, I'm going to say to you, that's unfortunate that they did that. What they should have explained to you is that it's a range. Without a mechanical inspection, I can't guarantee you that number. It can fluctuate up or down. Eliana, let me ask you this. It sounds like you've done all of your research and you're down to looking at what your trade is in for, so you can continue making an educated decision. I'm sure you don't want to visit 50 dealerships to do that. I can appreciate that. I'd like to give you a real number. Is there a time tomorrow you can come in and meet with our inventory specialist where I can do that for you? It should take about 45 minutes total, depending on what you decide your next steps are. If that's it, then about 45 minutes. If it's more than that, if you decide you want to look at another vehicle or talk about some additional numbers, it can take a little longer than that. But I appreciate all the research you did, and I want to do it right for you. I'm not lying to the customer. I'm giving a real response, and you know what? That's the truth. Those estimators can only give an estimate, and when your competitors give them a price, and it's exact, and it's not real, it's a problem. Now you're going to get a customer who might say to you, I want to know it. That's fine. Give it to them. Get the pictures. Get the VIN number. Get the information from them. And you're not asking them like my manager said, I have to get, I have to get pictures of your car to give you a number. Sell it. That's what you do. Eliana, can you go out and take some pictures of your vehicle for me? The reason I asked you is that if it was here in person, we would walk around it, and we would do the same thing visually. And I want to make sure I am working for you. I am your advocate in this customer service department. I am on your side, and I am here with you from the very beginning to the very end. We are going to create a dynamic experience, and it is going to be easy, and you are going to enjoy it. Sell that stuff. What about if they came in off a payment ad, right? What if they came in off a $199 lease ad? Do you know that? Does your BDC and your sales staff know what your ads look like right now, where they live, 
what they look like, and how that customer came in. It's not enough to just put notes in the system. Because if I want to have an educated conversation with the customer and I reference what they've seen, maybe when you get your marketing ads, if they're display, if they're PPC, whatever they are, uh, if they're display especially, you save the ad on your computer, give it to your BBC, you can make it simple, you can upload it into your CRM, you can make it hard. And when you respond back to the customer, deliver a consistent message. Oh, Anna, I see that you saw our 199 lease special that was running right now. That's great news. We worked with a lot of people off of that. Tell me, Eliana, what questions did you have on that that I can address for you? How can I help you? Reference back what it is. If you know they came out of a payment ad, you know that they're a payment buyer. Those buyers have been lied to for years and years. We, we run things like a 199 lease special, and then when they come in, we say things like, yeah, it's 199 If you own a Buick right now, have a red hat and amputated arm and a dog named Charlie. Is your dog named Charlie? Shit, can we get you one for the Humane Society real quick? Like, it's the craziest thing. And not only did we used to program the do, them to do it, there are dealers still doing it all over the place. Those are customers that are looking to see if they're telling the truth, if you're lying, or what their next step is. Is it sent in from the OEM? Here's what I mean by that. If you're a Chevy dealer on the call right now, you know that right now you're getting leads. The source that's coming from them is that they're almost paid off, right, that's coming in, or that they called and requested a payoff. Do you have that separated in your CRM? Have you trained your people to answer that right? Because I'll tell you what, if you're sending a first response that says something like, hey, great news, uh, I see you inquired on a vehicle. How can I help you? They never sent it in. It was sent in by the OEM. You need a streamlined process for that, or they're not going to engage with you because the same thing happens with hand raisers. Read the lead. Look at the current comments and questions that the customer sent in. Look at their past files and visits sold. Who are they? What, when, where, and why? Is there a note that says they have a daughter named Molly who plays soccer, and that's why they couldn't come in last time on a Saturday? Use that. Eliana, I see that last time we talked to you, uh, you weren't able to come in on Saturdays because your daughter Molly had soccer on those days. Is that still a thing for you? Is that still happening? People love it when you know details. That's why notes are so important. They're not just for right now. We are not just in the today business. And if you're thinking to yourself, that would take a long time, Bobby. How do you want me to respond quick? That's not true. It doesn't take a long time. Fix the name. Look at the source. Review the past files. I'm talking two minutes. I don't care if you know the details on the car or not because you're not selling a car over the phone. You're selling a relationship. I can be honest about that. All right. Going on to the next step. You can only get one chance to make a first impression. We're going to talk about right now response time, autoresponder, when we're closed, all these different topics that you're seeing on your screen and what the human touch looks like for them. So. What's your response time look like? Your goal is less than five minutes. If you're sick of hearing from people that your goal is less than five minutes, then step up the game. Here's a mindset alert. Did you know that the odds of making contact with a lead increases 100 times if it's called within five minutes? I can't make this shit up, people. It comes from like all these different surveys. NADA, Harvard University, Cox Automotive, all of these different companies that are spending billions of dollars on these studies, the odds of making contact with a lead increase 100 times if called within the five minutes first five minutes. So if you say to yourself during that time, well, shit, I'm busy. I didn't get to it. It only took me 12 minutes, Bobby. Great. Well, just know that for the next month, you're going to be calling them 100 times and hoping that they answer the phone. Stop what you're doing and call the customer right now when that happens. The chances of qualifying a lead are 21 times better if called within five minutes. What does qualifying mean? It means when are they ready to buy? Today, tomorrow, next month, yesterday, forever ago. Research shows that 35 to 50% of sales go to the dealer that responds first. I want you to think about this like the last time you bought a house. If you bought a house, you either worked with a realtor that you know or the one that listed the first house you looked at. Then we send them houses we want to look at every single day, and we typically work with that same realtor because their industry has convinced us that they are a one-stop shop and we work with one person. We've done a poor job of that. Answer quickly. Don't let the response time go because you think it's something somebody just told you that you needed to do. It's something that actually is true. Internet shoppers who receive a response within 10 minutes are three times more likely to visit the dealership. So when you do your research for bucket two, if you find that you're 23 minutes on a response time, yes, you want to get to under five, but don't be unrealistic and set goals where you can't win. Get to 10, get to eight, get to seven. Move the goal weekly with your team or yourself and hold yourself accountable. So I say, that's great, Bobby, but I didn't see it. I leave the round robin. I'll tell you, first of all, that's stupid. That's a fair game. Don't round robin your leads. I'll tell you what, Mary, the customer, does not care that Jason, the salesperson, was with somebody else because you wanted it to be fair. That's not five minutes. I only see it if I'm staring at the screen. Get it alerted to your phone. If your CRM doesn't do that, call the CRM company and find out how you can get that alert sent to your phone so you see it and hear it. We're closed. It was my day off. I'm not saying work 100 hours a week. Figure out a plan, okay? If you're closed and your competitor is closed, a five-second reach out on your phone if you have a legal texting option, or if you can email, or if you can make a quick phone call, it's huge. 
I was busy. I was answering another lead. Are you a one-man, one-woman show? I get it. I promise you I do. Figure out a way to balance that efficiency and where you're not running around the dealership. I was in a meeting at lunch on a break, saving the puppy. I was saving the world on Clark Kent, Chris Reed, whatever. Stop saving the puppy. I love the puppies too. Find somebody else to save the puppy and answer it from your phone. If your CRM doesn't allow it, call them. If you have a CRM company that will not allow these things, raise your hand. Because there was a time when Dealer Socket and Vin Solutions and Eleads, the big three, didn't do it either, but enough people raised their hands that they began to. You're like, ah, I'm only one person. Seriously. All right, hey, one person. If you uh, have to answer 500 other internet leads for the rest of the month because you didn't call them in five minutes, you're going to be calling them more and more and more instead of getting them on the first time. And ultimately, in the long run, it's going to take you a lot longer. Let's talk about autoresponders. What's the goal of an autoresponder? A response. Stop it. Only do an autoresponder when there is no other option. Okay? Nobody cares about an autoresponder. I tell, can tell you that the customer who sent in 10 leads gives no shift if you're close or not. They don't. They don't care because it's not about you. It's about them. Right? And you telling them you're open tomorrow was really helpful, but they probably already saw that on Google. So if you're going to use one, personalize it. I'll show you some examples of what that's going to look like. Say things like, I'm sorry, I saw that your information came through and we're closed right now, but I saw this come through on my phone and I wanted to reach out to you. Do you have any questions that I can check when I arrive at the dealership tomorrow and what time is best for us to chat? Then from my iPhone. Sounds like I actually responded to it. Mindset alert. An autoresponder in your first email, stop thinking about it as a response and start thinking about it as a welcome email. Welcome to the experience. Welcome to me. Welcome to our store. The minute you figure that out, that conversation looks different. Don't send an autoresponder out immediately. Schedule it for two to five minutes out. Otherwise, it looks like you sent that beautiful crafted thing. They send in the lead and then boom, they get it. They know you didn't send that, okay? Let's at least make it look like you tried to. Write it out like you actually sent it for a VIP experience. That's kind of what we were just talking about, making sure they understand. For example, Forgive the delay. Hello, Susan. I just received your email. Unfortunately, your request came in after our normal business hours. I saw it come through, so I wanted to send a quick email from home. As soon as we're back in the dealership. I'm the customer service director at ABC Motors, and my team and I handle all of the requests for information in the internet department. What time is best for us to reach out to you to cover any questions you have? Do you prefer communication by text, phone, or email? That doesn't have to be perfect, guys. I don't like templates. I like personality. But what I will tell you is that was about the customer not about me. I also started that out with, I just received your email, unfortunately, because that's what they're going to see on their phone before they open it. Okay? Let's go to the next poll question. I, can I just tell you, you're going really fast. Dude, I have to. We still have like 20 slides. I had a complete one time that I took too long, so I'm trying. You are flying through this stuff. Okay, so we want to know, audience, what are your open hours for answering leads. This is a pretty simple question. Please select one of the following answers. Answering leads, come on, that's not a thing. Okay, if the store is open, then we try to answer leads. Or if the store is open, we are totally on it, they're getting an answer. Seven days a week with set hours, or 24 seven every day, every day I'm hustling, or however that goes. Is it shuffling? <laughs> I love is it hustling that. shuffling? That's all I want to <laughs> Okay, so while you're answering that question, I want to just put out uh, a couple of, of the comments that have been coming in. For instance, Scott is chastising me right now. Scott says, don't slow down. I love the fast pace. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> All right. Um, and then we also have, um, oh, Tracy. She wrote in, Bobby Heron, you rock. Fast, Thank but you. very, very informative. Thank you, Tracy. Um, also want to point out, um, we have... Uh, couple people like Dan um, when you started listing all the different things that went in the different buckets Dan wrote and he's like yes she gets me <laughs> <laughs> I love that oh, I know that's funny all right so we have um, oh Riley writes in she is awesome yeah I know that Camille wrote in fast but I agree a lot of excellent info thank you Camille and Devon um, says you must have great lungs <laughs> <laughs> You're oh a singer, God. right? You sing? <laughs> <laughs> Not well. I sound like a drowned cat, but I still insist on performing in the car every time something comes on that I like. <laughs> so there's that. There's that. And while we're uh, answering this, guys, I want you guys to know, like, 
uh, you're never going to see me in a presentation where I'm going to say, oh, here's the 17 templates to magic, because I want you to know the why behind it so that when I'm not around or you're teaching your teams or you're passing along the communication, you're creating buy-in for what you're trying to accomplish. Because believe me, I know your biggest challenge in a store is getting somebody out of your way. The information I'm giving you, the things that I say like a realtor, that's for you to use when you're closing another person in the store to get something accomplished. So just know that. Okay. By the way, um, William also says Bobby's going to be Bobby. So either speed up or give up and catch the replay. <laughs> oh, gosh, we got harsh harshness over here. Okay, I love let's get. It. Let's get to the answers from this poll question. Audience, you guys are great. Thank you so much. Almost everyone has voted on this poll question. I really, really appreciate it. All right, so let's see what you all had to say. What are your open hours for answering leads? Okay, 0% of people said answering leads. That's not a thing. Obviously, this is how to learn to do it like a rock star 2.0. So obviously, those people didn't show up today, right? Okay, 3% of today's audience say if the store is open, then we try to do it. But the majority of people say... 52% of people today say, if the store is open, then we're on it. We will absolutely answer those leads. 20% of today's audience say seven days a week during set hours, they answer their leads. And then a quarter of today's audience say 24-7, baby. Every day we're hustling. All right, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious. Are you telling me that if the store is open and we're on it, really isn't the right answer. I mean, I know you kind of alluded to it earlier. And I and I will say this. Yeah. If I and I'm I don't work in a dealership obviously, we all know that. But I'm a webinar goddess and if I write to a presenter and I ask them a question and they respond to me at 3:45 in the morning, which by the way, you have done to me Bobby once before. <laughs> I I notice the time that they wrote back to me and it impresses me. First of all, I don't know why you're up at that time. <laughs> and if you are up at that time, why are you thinking about what I sent? What? Why are you answer? You know, you're reaching out to me at that time. So that actually does make a difference to me. So, Bobby, where? Yeah. I mean, you're telling me 24/7 we should be answering these opportunities. I am telling you that interestingly enough, guys. Uh, different CRMs work just differently, okay? But if you're a Vin Solutions dealer, do yourself a favor, go into reports and look at leads, the leads reports in the back, and you're going to use this report a little bit differently. When you scroll down to the bottom of that report, it's going to tell you exactly what time of day your leads are coming in and exactly what days of the week they're coming in. I'm going to show you just in a second something that might surprise you. If you're staffing your BDC for the hours your dealership is open, you're doing it wrong. That's when people are coming in, guys. That's not when people are reaching out to you, and I promise you, I'm not making this up. The data supports it, and I'll show that to you starting right now. Let's All right, guys, I want you to know that the numbers that you just gave do not surprise me, and I appreciate your honesty because Bright can't help you if you're not honest. I am like Planet Fitness. I am a judgment-free zone. It's not better or worse. It's just different, and it's an observation. So, sorry we're closed. Bless this opportunities is the goal here. Did you know that 30 to 40% of your leads come in after hours when you are closed? The busiest time for leads in a dealership that are getting missed are between 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. That's actually happening. In most of the CRMs I look at, and I did 101 CRMs for this study, to look at when their leads were coming in. They're happening, you get some two, three percent of the leads coming in after midnight and before 6 a.m., but they're happening between 7 and 11 p.m. and they're happening on Sundays. So they're happening when you're closed. Here's your mindset alert. Your competition is also closed, people. They're not answering them either. Hire somebody in your BDC, a temp person, an intern, somebody who's $8 an hour, $10 an hour, that's willing to work the 7 to 11 shifts. Schedule your BDC or your salespeople, whatever your setup is in your store, appointment setters, whatever. Schedule them for demand, not when the dealership is open. We call this ghosting. You do it from your phone. If you're working with a third-party vendor, you log into contact at once on your phone, you answer the chat. You have a lead coming through. I'm not saying that from 7 to 11, you should have somebody calling a million customers, but I'll tell you what, if they're already on schedule, have them call from 7 to 9 for the people you can get a hold of. But if not, if you're first leveling it, if you're like, ah, we can't do that in the dealership, they, they, we can't have people come in when we're closed, the dealer doesn't trust them, do it from home. I don't care how you do it, just do it. Find that number and do it. If you've got a good CRM, it'll show it to you. If not, you're going to have to figure it out, okay? Video. I can't, I don't have time to go into video today, but I'll tell you, uh, if you're not doing video, seriously, guys, like, get your shit together. Don't even get me started on that. That's a whole other presentation. But just know that everything I'm going to run through with you today would convert 60% higher if video was involved. 25% of all new shoppers spend one hour or more watching videos while researching. They visit a dealership after watching an online video. 
And those in-action videos, I'm not talking about those generic app OEM walk-arounds where they're like, oh, aren't these headlights right? I'm talking about, hey, my name is Bobby. I want to work with you. Showcase your personality. Words are just a series of letters strung together on paper. The minute that you humanize yourself is when it becomes real. Take your job right now. Then supply, like applying other places. Here's a tip. Send a video cover letter. Show how awesome you are. Do the same thing with your customer. Manners matter. I always talk about this in every single presentation. I would say something like, Eliana, let's play a game real quick. Do you like the color red? <laughs> it's my favorite color. Do you like the color blue? Eh, I like it. Do you think the sky is pretty? Yes. Would you eat a dead turtle in the middle of the road? Like, would you scoop it up and take it home and cook it? Wait, what? <laughs> If you saw if you saw a dead turtle in the middle of the road, would you pick it up and take it home and cook it and eat it? No. <laughs> you you ask that? That? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked me that. That's a ridiculous question, but do you know why you answered it, Eliana? Because I do what you tell me. <laughs> correct. Uh, correct, yes. You answered it because your entire life people said to you, Eliana, when you're asked a question, you answer it. Your mom, your teacher, your sister, your friend, your brother, your husband, your child. You said, look at me when I ask you a question. Answer the question. It's polite. Manners matter. Your whole life you were taught that. And guess what? So are all the people that you talk to. So base hit. End everything with a question. Not a question and then, thanks, I hope you're in your business. End it with a question. Make the question something you want a response to. Are you trading something in? Have you seen the technology on this vehicle? I'd like to earn your, earn your business. What's your next step? Give a question. It will increase your engagement. We don't win baseball games by hitting home runs. This is not a magical thing. It's all these little pieces that work together. Next up, you're not the decision maker. Knock that shit off. Quit making decisions for banks and for people. For the field people on the line, you'll recognize this. Uh, I've been to the desk 16 times in my career, and uh, all 16 times when I was tipped by brand negative equity, the manager said, it's a 620 credit score. We can't get that bought. Here's what happens. Out on the lot, the salesperson encounters a customer who's five grand tipped, and they mention that their credit is maybe around the 600s or maybe a spare or core. And immediately in your head, you make a decision for the buyer and say, or for the desk and say, oh, we wouldn't take that deal. And you stop working as hard on it. And the same thing happens with internet leads. you got to get out of your own way. Thinking it's true doesn't make it real. So if a manager has told you something 16 times, don't decide on number 17 that it's the same because that will be the time that you screw yourself. Only 32% of buyers know the exact vehicle they want to own. So if a lead comes in and you just sold the car yesterday, don't let that shit sit. You are selling something. You are selling an experience. The buyer is asking a question. Find out what they want. Don't be afraid to say, that vehicle sold yesterday. What was it about the car that you liked? What problems are you trying to solve? What are you trying to replace? 27% knew the body style, but not make the model. Did you know that? This comes from the Cox Automotive study, and it's not that I'm, I'm promoting Cox here. It's just they have a lot of money, and they spend a lot on the study, and it gets very like uh, granular where people question it, so they can't lie on it. But last year, they did 60,000 people who bought a car, and 27% said when they send in their leads, they knew the body style, but not the maker model. 15% had no idea what vehicle they wanted, but they knew the class. 9% knew the make. 9% didn't know the vehicle, but knew the features. Think about that for a minute. When something comes in and you don't know what it is, just ask the question. Stop pushing these to the side. It happens all the time. Okay? First responses. What's your goal? It's engagement. We're not trying to sell a car in the first response, guys. If you're working with one of the OAUM approved vendors that gives you a template that's like 20 paragraphs long, you are not trying to sell a car. You're trying to sell an experience. Your dealership is not unique, but you can be. Why buy is a huge message that I teach. We don't have time on this call, but we'll do it another time. Uh, but if you don't have a why buy message, you better get one because the only difference between you and your competitors is the people in the process that live in your store. The building is the same. The payments are the same. The car is the same. You're not special in a building but you are showcase that. Know why somebody should buy from your store and also know why they should buy for you. Call me maybe. Stop sending an email to stop the clock is the first thing. Call the customer because if they answer, your email should be tailored to what the conversation was, an appointment set, answering a question. If not, you're sending a first response. It's not all about you guys. Stop saying things like, hi, my name is Bobby. Do not hear that your name is Bobby and also it's in your signature line. So it's repetitive and dumb. You have to have short, sweet, templates, short and sweet templates, short and sweet conversations that end with a question. Get personal, compliment, recognize, obligate, and give a next step. I'm going to show you an example of what I mean for that. Watch your words. Are you creating objections? If your first response says something like, we don't mark cars up in the thousands, only in the hundreds, why are you creating a price objection right up front? 
why are you asking questions about how many miles they want on their lease? Guess what? The only thing they can do is respond to you with the answer to that question and what do you have to do next? Now I have to give you a payment. I didn't even give my chance to get myself a chance to get over it. Look at the things that you're sending back first and make sure that they're not creating objections that aren't there. Okay? And manners matter. So when you start with, hello, my name is, unless you're slim shady, you need to sit down. That's not how you get somebody's attention. Okay? This is an example of a first response to a customer that works really well. These have been tested. Again, I don't like templates, so if you want to use a variation, please feel free to. But let's try this. First of all, great choice. Here's my compliment. It's obvious you've done your research. I'm recognizing that you researched. Since 2013, Laredo has been an extremely popular vehicle, which is why I want to go out on the lot and actually put my hands on it. We used to send out these postcards all the time that gave away freebies or things that we sent to customers. St. Jude sends out right now a letter that asks for you to make a donation and gives you a dollar in the letter. They sent out $50,000 to get $100,000 back because it creates an obligation. I am not going to tell you that the vehicle is, in fact, available. One, that's a lie. I don't know for sure. Rarely do I know for sure that somebody didn't sell it or move it or transfer it or dealer trade it or wholesale it. But it is a popular vehicle. And I want to go put my hands on it. I don't want you to just drive into the dealership and come see it. Guys, that happens. You send back a, oh, great news, this car is available. And guess what? Now they don't need you anymore. They can figure out everything else. I'm going to set an obligation. I'm putting the picture of the vehicle in the middle. On a first response, one to do vehicles max, not 17 or a link. Here's why. If I'm walking through Target, Walmart, Home Depot, the mall, my office, anywhere, and you send me an email and it has too many images in it, one, it can go to spam, so it's got to be the ROI has to be there. But two, the images won't load. Then I'm waiting for an email to load, and I'm bouncing off of it because I don't have the time or the inconvenience for that. I'm putting it in the middle of the first response because if you put it in the top or you have one of those fancy little headers that everybody thinks looks so pretty with the images, guess what it shows up like on a mobile phone? The first two lines are coding. Do you want the first two lines on a mobile phone when they look at their email to say transmission, continuously variable transactional? No, you don't. You don't want it to say that. So put it in the middle. If when you try to insert it in the middle in any CRM, it goes to the top, it's called compatibility setting. Google it. It's one click to fix it. It's not your CRM. It's your browser. There's nothing worse than finding a great deal on the exact vehicle you want and then finding out it isn't available. Yes, I'm going to register that you found a great deal because I'm not going to create a price objection and I don't want to talk about that with you now. Unfortunately, the information you send in doesn't come through with any particular questions. More than 70% of the leads you get don't have any questions in them. We'll talk about that in just a second, too. But if they ask questions, change that line. While I'm out there, do you have any other questions or options on condition or condition I can check for you? Ending it with a question, guys. But did you notice? This car is a Patriot and not a Laredo. Sweat the details. If you don't have the car, then don't say this Laredo has been a popular vehicle. Say something like, that vehicle is so popular that we're waiting to be restocked on it. Good news is we're looking for it for you now. Let's get some more information. But while you're waiting, you might not have seen this one on our inventory. It's rather new. Sweat the details. What am I supposed to say to that? I love this uh, comic on here. I have a customer on the line, but I'm not trained on what to say. I love it because this happens in so many dealerships, right? People say things just like, what do you mean you don't know what to say? I told you 13 times. Mm, probably you didn't. So when somebody asks about a new car we to purchase quote, and that's their first question, just get real. In reference to your questions on pricing, there's a few factors that go into giving you an accurate price quote that is specific to you. Beginning with your zip code, county, and if you'll be paying cash or financing. Those are just a few of the items that make a difference in terms of pricing. I've found that a quick 10-minute phone call allows us to make sure we have everything we need to give you an accurate number along with answering any questions you have as a result. That is always faster for my customers than the back and forth of what comes with emailing. See, I'm doing the customer a favor. It's not about me. It's about them. We know that it'll take more time. I'm explaining the why, what happens with most people. When's the best time to contact me so I can get the information you requested? If you're saying to yourself, I do a variation of that, well, a variation of that and that are not the same thing. So think about the compliment, the research, the education, the question. Are you in it for them? There's no information on the lead. What do I do with that? There's not a question. Here's a secret. That's usually the same thing as the phone call who didn't want to talk to you where they're confirming if it's available and if the price that they saw online is accurate. They just want to know if they're being lied to and if the car is there. Just address that. Use a first response like I just showed you. What's the price of the vehicle? Some of you on the line are like, of course we get the price of the vehicle. You'd be surprised by how often that doesn't happen. Here's the thing. Vehicle pricing is not a secret. It's listed on your website. If it's not on your website, you've got a different roadblock that you need to handle. And you should know what the price of the vehicle is. It's okay to say those vehicles, if you're talking about a new car, they start at $16.9 and go up to $27.5, depending on the trim package that you select and a couple other features. When's the time for me to get those questions answered? Follow the format that we just talked about and customize that conversation. The goal of an email is to get them on the phone or engaged so that you can create a quick relationship, build some trust, 
and ultimately have them come into the store, okay? Wait, I have a question. I'm interested in this vehicle. The listed price is three grand more than what I'm willing to pay. Are you able to meet my price point? Some of you experience in your store that where did the customer get that number? What do they think? We mark this shit up? Yes. Yes, they do in fact think that. So, yeah, that's the thing, right? But you might assume, and a used car manager all the time when you go to him assumes that, well, it's three grand more. They're just trying to, they're trying to beat us out. They're trying to get less of a price. Stop creating stories in your head that aren't real. You're not the decision maker. Maybe they visited the dealership on Monday who told them that the car they were looking at was 15 grand and that equaled a $300 payment on 60 months. So now they think that they want a $300 payment and they're sending an offer in to get the car they like to that payment. Maybe they don't know they can go longer term or it can be leased, whether it's a new or a pre-owned. Maybe they apply for financing at another dealership at some point in time and the dealership said they needed three grand down. We assume that customers know that banks buy based on credit, structure, money down, LTV, all of those factors. We make that assumption, but they don't know that maybe the reason they're offering three grand less is because in their head it equates to three grand down. Ask the question, tell the customer the truth. Mr. Mrs. Customer, when we look at an offer like this, we like to talk on the phone for a couple minutes, maybe 10, so we can see what's actually happening and we can give you some information. However you want to say that is fine, but just be genuine and honest and then find out what the real deal is. Stop creating stories in your head. This is one of my favorites uh, <laughs> because it makes me mad every time I read it. Uh, but in a forum that I belong to, somebody posted this, and recently I saw it happen again. And this is actually a form letter. You might know that or not, that you can a customer can have a form letter made. They can just fill in a little blank. It's like one of those ad-lib games and send it into you. So this gets posted, and it says, I've test driven the vehicle already, so I do not need to come in. I'm looking to buy in the next two weeks. I'm researching all dealerships in the state, and I'll work with the dealership who gives me the best offer out the door. I'd like an out the door price on the model, availability on your lot, waiting time, and I also want to know how far over, under, invoice you're quoting me. That way I can compare offers accurately. Listen, guys, you find what you look for. I'm going to tell you right now that some of the smartest people I know responded to this, and I wanted to smack them through the phone, smack them through Facebook, thinking, what the hell are you thinking? Over 150 GM sales managers, high-level salespeople, posted on this exact question that was posted from a uh, dealer that posted it for a customer and said, Oh man, look, they just want you to do all the work so they can compare it to somebody else. I kicked that one to the curb. I'm not giving them that information so they can shop me. Um, they're already shopping you where you wouldn't have gotten it. One. Two, this is the customer that you want. They're a buyer and they did all the work for you. All of the work for you. They've already test driven the car. They're acknowledging that you might not have it because it's a ditch market and how long do you want it? You hear this on the floor all the time. Oh, it's not apples to apples. It's not the same thing when comparing to another dealer. Uh, they said under or over invoice, so it could be apples to apples. Okay? This is a customer who's saying to you, give me your best price and I'll buy from you. So your dealer or you might think to yourself, well, it's the best price. I'm going to lose money. This is a loss leader. Mm, it's only that way if you let it be. Because see, here's the thing. I can address every customer, every question this customer asks in the email, and I am not afraid to say to the customer, the only difference between me and my competitor is the experience that we offer. I want to earn your business. I appreciate that you did this research. I am, I am working for you right now. Please tell me what your next steps are because I want to work with you. And guess what? If the quote was $500 higher than your competitor, they're likely to reach out to you and say to you, the other one was $500 less, and you have another opportunity to earn the deal. This customer did for you what happens in a showroom when 80% of the time is spent trying to break down walls and get information and only 20% of the closes. And then we have the balls in this industry to say things like, well, I'm not working with that customer. Okay, well, you're, you need to get it together. Okay, maybe this isn't the right job for you. And I get it. Old school managers and stuff will say the same thing to you. Uh, you're giving them numbers to shop. Um, yeah, that's not really a thing anymore. They already shopped you before they got there, and they're still going to shop you. And why the hell are we not giving people the numbers? Because they might not buy from us. If I don't answer this, they're not buying from me. So what is the worst thing that happens for the 10 minutes I put into it? Oh, maybe they won't buy from me. But maybe they will, okay? Follow up and follow through. What if we don't change it all and something magic happens? I always love this. People always say things to me like, um, uh, you know, well, Bobby, like, what could we do that's different? I don't know. How about you just start with implementing what we talked about? How about you just start with some follow through? Because what you're doing isn't working. And it's not working because every time you want to do something, it's a workaround. It's a word track from a company like, if you say this, you'll get this response. Uh, no, guys, it's not like that. It's really a genuine conversation. Don't be afraid to say, I'd like to set an appointment for you to come in. What time is good for you? If a customer tells you, well, your competitor did this, just be real. Actually just say what the truth is and then ask for it. People are likely to do what you ask them to do. Okay? The today business is not a thing. This is one of the biggest problems that I see when you guys are replying to people or when you're seeing things. 
is like we follow up to that seven to 21 days. And then we're like, well, they didn't answer. Oh, I'm okay. Well, you're not going to call them back. They might be stuck on a Ferris wheel. We are in a today, today business mindset. You have to work smarter versus tired. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So if you stop calling them after two weeks, that's fine. Maybe you're like, I'm not wasting my time on that kind of rejection. Or maybe you're like, I don't have time to do it. Guess what? Somebody else does. They're going to submit it in somewhere else, and they're going to be the one that gets the car deal because you didn't follow up with them. I get it. Rejection is not easy. Robo-dialing 150 calls a day is hard. Being in a BDC or an appointment center job is very hard. It takes a lot of confidence because it's a lot of rejection, and it takes a lot of follow-through. But here's a national average for you. 44% of salespeople give up after one follow-up. So maybe you say to yourself right now, well, I'm not that guy. Guess what? 44% of your competition is, so good for you. You're already killing them and already getting out on that. 10% of salespeople follow up past the third contact. I have checked this in CRMs of the best BDCs I have ever seen and of hybrid stores that are rocking it. And I will tell you that that number is true, that we are following up three times or we are attempting contact three times. And what I mean by attempting contact outside of this stat, because I didn't make this stat up as a national average, is that if you're clicking a button to send a template, that's not a real follow-up. If you didn't write it and doesn't showcase your personality, that is not real. Be honest with yourself. Don't think I'm judging you right now, but be honest with yourself. Are you falling into that pattern? Because those buyers are up to 180 days. And do not say to yourself right now, well, I sell this and it's different. It's not different, guys. It's a mindset. The person that sends you in an internet lead that drives a car right now and they haven't bought a month from now, I promise you that they did not sell their car and get a buck back. They're going to be a buyer. Let it be from you. There is a be back bus. Stop saying shit like there's no be back bus. There is too a be back bus. In your CRM right now, dealer socket or Vin Solutions, you can look to see how many people visited your showroom on a first visit and a second and then bought for you, bought from you. 38% of buyers visited only the dealership they bought from, only the dealership they bought from, and then they came back for another visit. What I am telling you with this is get out of the today business. We're like, what did you do for me today? How many cars did you sell today? What did you do this month? Start all over on the first of the month. You used to be a hero. Now you're a zero. That is a mindset in the automotive industry, but I am a buyer whether I buy from you today or I buy from you tomorrow. So if you look at how people are spending time on their vehicle, it's 14.48 hours. It's taking up to 180 days. Even if right now you're only following up for 21, go to 40. Be constantly adding something that's on there for you, right? Why don't people buy from the dealership? Here's a couple of reasons. This came from the Cox Automotive study. They like to shop around. They didn't have the vehicle I wanted. I'm not ready to make a decision. I'm not able to come to a deal. After the test drive, I didn't like it, or it was a poor sales experience. Make the customer service call afterwards and find out what it really was and correct the problem in your store, and not from a gut perception point, from a data point, okay? When I talk about today business, I'm talking about a Ferris wheel of filling it up. Only 40%, 47% of buyers surveyed said they received follow-up communication in the study. That is disgusting. That is us choosing us over the customer experience. And here's the thing. Everything you do for 90 days before you do it dictates what your sales look like for the month. And I want to work smarter, not harder. So I'm filling up a Ferris wheel. When a customer calls me or talks to me, whether it's at a dealership, a client I consult with, when they get on my Ferris wheel, I don't care if you go around one time, two times, or 17 times. Get on my Ferris wheel because when you get off my Ferris wheel, I'm going to be standing right there and ready for you, which means I will make you a touch point. If you tell me you're not buying a car for 90 days, I'm going to have my CRM remind me to call you once a week just to be in front of you. Because here's the thing. If you just follow up with them in 90 days, they're probably already a buyer somewhere else. But what if I called them once a week and just said, hey, I know you're not buying for 90 days. I'm just calling to say hello, and I'm calling because I want to be the choice you make when you're ready, and I don't want you to forget who I am. How is your research going? What are your next steps? How can I help you? That's not a hard call to make, guys. Say no to templates for this Ferris wheel. Personalized emails will improve your click-through rates by 14% and your conversion rates by 10. Even if it is something as simple as are you still interested, it doesn't matter. Stay in front of the customer. They've talked to 50 people. They've got 100 emails. They're not going to remember your name unless you're outstanding. Okay? Mindset alert. Today isn't your last day, is it? Do you want to sell cars next month? Do you want to set appointments next month? Stop focusing on just today and start calling these customers back long term. Your CRM needs love. This is a different presentation. I'm just going to touch on it brief, briefly, but plug and play is not okay. Get into the processes in your CRM and hyper-target them. If the Chevy customer lead comes in and it's from the OEM and it's, uh, they called to get a payoff, you should have that source set up in your CRM with a process that follows it and the suggested templates that you wrote, not the CRM company, that come up to suggest for you to send. Make your life easier. Stop sending shit that everybody is sending all the time. 
clean it up. Go into your CRM and clean it up. I do this for clients all the time, but you can do it for free inside of your own store with the performance manager by calling your CRM. Having something VMS doesn't make it clean. It's not easier. If your bathroom has makeup all over it and you're trying to find your lipstick, it's a little bit harder to find your lipstick, right? It's like 10 minutes or 7 minutes instead of 1. Imagine if you're looking for your lipstick 15 times in a day. Now you've wasted an hour and a half, and that's the time in the beginning. Use the CRM, for real. Like, seriously, just be like Nike, just do it, just use it, because writing shit down and trying to remember it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. You need it to be efficient if you're going to follow new processes, okay? Your CRM is your personal assistant. You just never trained them. And if you think to yourself right now, I've trained them amazing, and my CRM is badass, and we're doing it, it can always be better. You can always make it better and more efficient for you, and it's free, okay? So what about when you're sending emails to customers and you're personalizing them? I'm going to tell you right now that what you should do when you get off this phone call is you should set up a bank of templates that are personalized from you, showcasing your personality in each situation with a couple different things, short and sweet, and with a question, and then bank them into your CRM so that you can use them and personalize them as you go. Save yourself the time. When you're writing an email, use their preferred communication first because you asked for it in an email. What do they prefer? Write a subject line like it's your mama. Hotmail, Gmail, Outlook, Yahoo, here's the tip. They don't care if your email goes to spam or not. Their goal is to not have salesy shit go to people so that they stop using them. So write it like you would to your mom. Don't add question marks. Don't add exclamation points. Don't add hashtags. You don't talk to your mom like that, so don't put it in there. I know everybody's big on grammar, and that's great, but they don't belong in your subject line. They can get you spammed. Begin the email with a strong CPA to open it. Not, hi, my name is Slim Shady. Please stand up. Instead, Say something that would make them open it. Look at your cell phone right now on your email and look at, you see the first two lines and you decide if you're going to open something based on those. Make it matter. Be relevant. Showcase your personality. I send things to customers. I'll show you just a second. I send things to customers that say stuff like, I'm assuming that you haven't responded to me because of one of three things, right? One, the deal was so awesome that you fell out on the floor. Two, you bought a car and I'm bugging you and you just don't want to tell me. Three, you're stranded on the desert island and you need me to save you. My personality allows me to say things like that because when you do call me back, that's the kind of stuff I'm going to say to you and be jokey. So it matches my personality. Also, humor is engaging. Try it. It's fun, right? Send a breakup email if it's been a month. That's what we call them. I have one where my subject line that goes to potential clients says, is it you or is it me? People open it because they're like, oh, that's funny. I'll open that. Instead of subject lines like, I'm not trying to bother you, if you actually you are trying to bother them to get a response. So stop lying to them. Pay attention to when you send it. If you're sending all your emails at 9 a.m. in the morning and the customer was engaging with you by sending in a lead at 8 p.m. at night, you're probably more likely to send it at 8 p.m. at night and actually get a response. It's not about you. It's about them. Start breaking your day into four different chunks, right? So different hours, depending on what you work. If you're working a 10-hour day, break it into two-hour chunks. And in that two hours, commit to doing follow-up to 20 different people that were best used during that time. Your CRM can tell you when that is. Do not say shit like, I'm here until 2 o'clock. When can you come in? Like, red alert, they don't care that you're there until 2 o'clock. You have not earned their business. That's about you. Don't include sales words in the subject line or add a header image to the top. If your CRM is set to add that beautiful image to the top that looks so pretty, just know it can get you delivered to spam. It's not that important that your store name be in the top of the email. Although it looks nice, it also lives in the signature line and in the reply. Okay? Stop doing that. You're getting yourself undeliverable. Don't insert more than two vehicle images. Just like we talked about, it can get stuck when you're opening it, when you're walking through someplace, what's happening. They don't need 37 options. You're not selling a car in an email. You're creating a relationship and, an, and a conversation. Don't send a generic template just to clear a task. Guess what? It's going to come up again, and you're going to have had no response. Don't work harder. Work smarter. Put the work in in the beginning, and I promise you, you will get the result. Here's an example of what I was talking about with the email. See those first two lines on there? That's what a customer looks at to decide if they're going to open it. See these two first two lines on here from LinkedIn where it's like mid token, AQF, AMHG. I'm probably not going to open that. Hey, LinkedIn, I'm not opening that shit. They're not opening it from you either. Okay? So let's get personal. Engaging examples. Here's a couple examples. I'm not going to read through them all the way because you're going to have a copy of these. These are the kind of things that I send. I'll tell you over here, right? The RU subject line was still interested. It's the highest performing email that I've ever sent out in any store all of the time because it is sweet, simple, and it is only a question, and it is non-threatening for a customer to respond to it. They don't want to tell you that they already bought a car. You're not friends. They don't owe you anything, and they don't want you to bother them. But if you give them a reason to have the conversation, they will. They will talk to you. Okay? Over here, you've got one. I will not give up on us. This is a breakup email. Okay, I keep calling, but no one answers. I send emails and no one replies. It's a little bit lonely over here in customer service land. I thought I should mention it again, and I put this in all of my emails. 
it gave my other emails within a spam box somewhere that under our customer service policy, I'm required to try to follow up with you until I hear back from you. That's because we pride ourselves on the customer service experience. I am going to tell the customer that that's my policy so that as they get 100 emails from me, they know that eventually it will stop if they just tell me the truth or if they engage with me. I'm also going to tell them in the email, and this is one of the few times it's okay to have a longer one because it's an explanation later in the process. You may not know this, but vehicle shoppers on average spend up to 180 days researching and making a decision before buying a vehicle. Most dealerships drop trying to reach out after only a week or so. That's great for the customer if they're no longer looking, but what about the people who are and just haven't had a chance to respond? These are not crazy workaround word tracks. These are just the truth and genuinely telling somebody what I want, right? Over here, you've got one for if it's been a couple months in the car, pricing has changed. Over here, look at these subject lines. Why can't we be friends? It's worth the read. I'm sure you have multiple dealerships reaching out to you right now, and I'm showing up as just another dealership trying to get your attention. I've unsuccessfully attempted to contact you by phone and email over the last few days. Here's the thing, though. It may seem like you get the same items accomplished, regardless of what dealership you go to, but I can tell you that in a world full of dealerships on every corner, that's not true. We really pride ourselves on the experience we offer. You cannot sell being the best price unless you want to be a volume loss leader dealership, and you shouldn't be trying that unless you've tried the other stuff first. They're going to get quotes from 15 different people. They're going to be kind of similar. I'm going to tell them that I am different. I'm going to add a link for my customer reviews to them and say, you don't have to trust me. Trust what my customers have to say or read what my customers have to say. Are you considering anything else? So why can't we be friends email over here? Here's those couple examples, right? I've left you a few messages and I'm beginning to feel guilty about it. I want that to come up in the mobile so it looks like I'm doing something for them because I am. Typically, when I haven't heard back from someone, it means they're either really busy or aren't interested. My guess is that I'm not hearing from you because of one of three possibilities. Boom. One, there's no way you're calling me back after how many times I've tried to call you and sent emails. Tell me some slack. Competition is everywhere. I wanted you to know I actually want it in your business. You're actually planning on getting back to me very shortly because you find my persistence enchanting rather than irritating. In case you're curious, this is what I'm voting for. You've already purchased a vehicle and are just deleting my emails as you see them because you think I'm just a computer funding. I am real. I swear. What are our thoughts? What are your thoughts? I'm going to be real with the customer. I'm going to use humor to engage them, and I'm going to let them know that I want it in their business right now if they're ready, tomorrow if they're still in the process, and I'll help them. And if they have already purchased a vehicle, I want to let them know that that's okay to let me know, and I will stop bugging them. The goal is to weed that out. All right, Eliana, we're going through a lot, and we're running out of time, so let's get to a poll question. <laughs> you mean we've already run out of time? Yup. All right, here we go. Last poll question <laughs> on the screen. Now. Get something to drink. My God, I can't even believe you've had so much stuff Ooh. coming out of your mouth today. All right, audience, we want to know, has your dealership ever provided or sent you an in-depth lead training like the one today? Please select one of the following answers. Training? Nope. Hashtag old school. Um, there was that one time in band camp, um, just the OEM stuff online and sometimes in my store, or yes ma'am, training is our jam, or listen, I know everything there is to know, hashtag just here for the prize. All right, once we get a majority of the votes in, we will close this poll and share the results. So we want to know, has your dealership ever provided any kind of in-depth how to rock a lead training like the one you have been hearing about today from Bobby herself. And by the way, Bobby, I just want to point out that you have cursed on my program today more than 10 times. Just putting that out there. Well, <laughs> let me just remind you that it was worth it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> We're doing just a series of letters strung together so they only have the power that we give them. That's the class that I teach. They're so just sentence dollars. enhancers. It's okay. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> Michael says, cursing makes her human. Love it. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. <laughs> and then uh, Jenna says, cursing wasn't in the legal disclaimer. So <laughs> that's valid, Jenna Dollinger. I know that's who that came from. Totally fair. Jenna, Jenna's calling you out on that. Okay. And then Dan says, by the way, those email responses are hilarious. And um, thank you. Uh, Steve says, dealers rarely know how to conduct real training. That is Steve's Amen, opinion. my friend. Not I'm necessarily the opinion of the show. <laughs> no, but you know what? Here's the thing about what Steve said is that um, oftentimes we think that real training is a word tracker. Somebody standing in front of a classroom saying, you should respond to this question exactly like this. But here's the thing. If you have kids, you know this. Or if I say this to you like this, if you walk into the room and you say, Bobby, can I have that chocolate chip cookie on the counter? And I say no and there's a whole jar of chocolate chip cookies. When I walk out of the room, you're probably going to eat one of the cookies. But if instead what I say is, 
uh, no, you can't have that. It's a poisonous cookie because I saw a mouse last night and I'm leaving it out for it. So don't eat the cookie. You're not going to eat the cookie when I leave the room because I gave you the why. I don't want to teach you templates. I don't want to teach you uh, to respond with certain things. I want you to learn things like respond with a question because you were taught your whole life to do it. Because when I'm not around, you can teach that to your people and you don't need to pay somebody to do it. You'll understand why the customer experience changes the conversation. Okay. Um, uh let me go through a couple more of these comments and then we will uh, close out that poll question. So kick the person next to you if they haven't answered yet. Okay, Steve <laughs> says, uh, Steve was one who said they really know how to conduct real training. Ariel wrote in, I agree with Steve. So there you have that. And then um, uh, uh, Riley wrote in, training is done here on a weekly basis and now I'm going to train my managers with your presentation. Good job, Riley. Good for you. I love that. <laughs> yes. And then um, uh, William said, uh, was this training rated TVMA? Who cares? <laughs> uh, so I thank you for that. Anything, I didn't say anything with words that started with an X, guys. So no, no you that. didn't. <laughs> bravo, bravo. Yes, you stayed thank away you. from the F-bombs. All right. Um, okay, so let's see what the audience had to say. Has your dealership ever provided or sent you to an in-depth lead training like the one today? 17% of today's audience said training, uh, no. Old school. All right. 20% of today's audience say there was that one time. <laughs> yeah. 35 yeah. Only one time. 35% of today's audience said just the OEM stuff online and sometimes in the store. That was the majority. 28% said, yes, ma'am, training is our jam. And no one said, I know everything. I'm just here for the prize. So <laughs> out, of all of the, out of all the people that are here today, 28% said yes, basically. And then the and rest you know of what, Aliana? Them, yeah, no. I'll guarantee you that half of the people that either orchestrate or conduct the people, conduct those trainings or make sure it happens in that 28% are on this call because they're investing in themselves right now in the middle of the day unless somebody asked them to, to get on it, which if they did, good for you for teaching somebody something that they're not getting all the time. When a source of training is my jam, it's usually the people that are in the store that are on this call that are passing along that information. And yeah. for the 17% of you that said training no old school, good for you for investing in yourself and getting on the call and recognizing that you're not going to let somebody get in your way. You're going to train yourself if you need to. I'm very proud of you guys. Well, Darren wrote in and he said, very true, Bobby. And then I want you to know Ross said, all of my training has been through resources that I've had to find on my very own. I yeah. hear you, Ross. That's why we do these webinars, right? And then Monica wrote in, this is a great webinar for training. This company has not Thank provided you. any, but Bobby's the only trainer thus far that 110% completely agree with all that she has said. Hashtag, she's my new fave. <laughs> oh, I love that. Add me on Facebook. Let's be friends. I love new relationships. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was, from, that was from Angelina. I'm sorry. That was from oh, Angelina. Angelina. Add me. Add me for sure. Um, so here's the thing, guys. I did this webinar this way because my hope is that you will, you will print these screens, you will take your team, and you will put this in the middle of a meeting, and you will press play, and you will pause it to talk about the points that you have in your store that need to be fixed. Use it. It's free. I'm doing it not to sell you anything. I'm doing it because I believe in you, and I have sat in your seat, and I know what you're facing every single day, and I want to make sure that you have a training that's not some generic crap that nobody's going to pay attention to that is honest and real and raw. And that is why I swear during my training because you guys swear in your dealership. Even Jenna, who loves Jesus, cusses a little all the time. That's the thing. She does. Jenna who loves Jesus, Jesus cusses? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Jenna is like, it, Jenna is like the, the most uh, pure person I've ever met in my life, and I love her. Jenna and she it. swears more than me. She Jenna just me. wrote in. Wait, Jenna just wrote in. She says, "Listen, Bobby, what the sh are you talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, wait. Uh, Jenna, yeah, Jenna. Oh, yeah. Wait, I gotta get to. A, I gotta get to a couple more of these comments before yeah, we, we let it go. Um, uh, Monica says, "Great webinar for training. I think if more BDC reps took part in this, more BDCs would be more successful." Carrie says, "This has been a really fun class." Amber says, "Dealer on is my only training. So thankful for you, ladies. Oh, thank you. Awesome." Um, Nick says, favorite dealer on webinar so far. Awesome. Ooh, mic drop. I'll take that. I'll take it. <laughs> Albie says, 
I know, right? Thank you, Nick. Albie said, this was so worth getting up at 5 in the morning for awesome webinar. Thank you so much. William says, Bobby brings the training like a boss. Jeffrey says, great stuff. Will there be a follow-up? Well, Bobby and I have to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> Diane, oh, Diane, how are you, girl? She says, excellent information. And then she started cursing at me. Um, Janelle <laughs> says, BDC strong. Uh, Camille says, so much great info in this training. I love all the information. Uh, Bobby is great. Devon says, this was even better than Bobby's last time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then um, Bo says, is this going to be online so we can rewatch it? It's not online yet, but it will be, and you will be getting a link later today for it. All right, let's get let's keep going because you're not even done yet, and we're closing in on 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah, guys, oh every once in a while I get a comment after one of my webinars where they're like, it went too long. So just know I want to give you all the value, and if you have to drop off, you're going to get a recorded uh, link for it so that you have it. I will pull you through if you're a BDC person on the phone. I don't care if you are – uh, a five dollar an hour employee or a hundred and fifty dollar an hour employee don't you let anybody in your dealership make you feel like you're not as valuable you handle eighty percent of the money they spend eighty percent millions of dollars are transacted through you and there are a lot of dealerships who do not recognize that yet they will I promise you might be starting on the ground level but every day is an interview don't don't let somebody make you feel like you're not as important as the person closing the car deal or the GM sitting in that chair because I'll tell you before BBC, I would have told you that the quarter was the most important in the dealership, and I'll tell you they're still pretty much second to none. The job that you do, the role that you play, you are the communicator. You're the PR person. You're building a relationship. I'm going to do uh, hopefully another presentation with Eliana about what it looks like for a confirmation and what somebody comes in and how you can seamlessly hand off so the closing ratio is higher. I just couldn't fit it into this one. But until then, just reach out to me. I'm crazy busy, but if you send me a text, I'll reply to you. And if I don't, you send me a text like, what the shit, Bobby? Like, I sent you a text. Because I don't like those little red dots on my screen, and sometimes I hit them and I miss it. But you are welcome to reach out to me. My cell phone number will be given at the end. Don't be afraid to do it. I love to make new connections. It's not just filling a Ferris wheel. I also want people to hang out at a carnival with me. So let's win some games together. I want, to leave, I want you guys to see this quote because this is a really big one. I believe that in any dealership with anything that you're trying to fix or anything that you want to do, that it's either a knowing problem or a doing problem. Either you don't know or you chose not to. Those are the only two ways it happens, right? So before this webinar, it could have been a knowing problem. But if you choose not to implement what we did today, it'll be a doing problem. So keep this in mind. There is little difference between those who cannot read and those who will not read. The result of both is ignorance. That's a powerful statement to share because it's true. If you know something and you do nothing with it, you are in your own way. You are your own fault. And to give you some suggested resources, things that I love, obviously this PowerPoint, I risk my street cred for you. And if you think I'm kidding or don't, I'm getting made fun of hardcore for how much content I put in these. So like, <laughs> helpless is are out here. Do something with it. I have handed, I've attached a couple handouts for you. One is screenshots of this in a PDF so you can print it out reference back to it, because when you listen to it back, I'm going to still be talking just as fast, guys. It's a recording. But if you have this one out in front of you, you can jot down the things that are important to you that went with each section. There are Facebook groups out there that you should be a part of. One is Elise Kephart's EKX group. That's a BDC group that has a bajillion people in it. Elise shares templates. And Elise is brilliant. She shares templates and video examples and shit that you normally have to pay thousands of dollars for. And people are collaborating on it. People just like you are going in there and saying, hey, here's what happened today, how would you handle it? Invest in yourself, especially if you're falling in the uh, training notes and the just the OEM stuff in store, belong to them. The tribe, that's a super secret group. I'm not even allowed to talk to, about it. It's like Fight Club, so shh, don't tell them I talked about it when I add you. You can find Elise Kephart without uh, having to add me as a friend because that's a secret, uh, not a secret group. It's an open group, but the tribe is a secret group. And she's the only actually, way to get into she's it, actually on your show today, oh. by the way. She checked oh, in. Hi, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, she is a freaking brilliant, and she will help you. She's like me. She's a relationship person. We want you to succeed, and not because somebody wrote us a check to make us do it. It's because somebody, we sat in your chair, we lived in your moment, and somebody stepped up and said, I want to see you succeed, and they helped us, and we give back for that reason. If you want to join the tribe, I highly suggest that there's some rules. If you don't follow the rules, and I suggested you, I will shank you. Uh, not Bo, honestly, Bo no, says the tribe doesn't exist. <laughs> Yeah, the Thanks. tribe doesn't exist, but if you'd like to join the tribe that doesn't exist, you need to add me as a friend on Facebook so I can add you. So if you add me on Facebook from our call today, my Facebook is personal. Uh, I share my life with you because I'm a real person just like you are. Uh, but 
if you add me today from the call, send me a quick message and just say, I was on your webinar, I want to be added so that I know. I'm getting hit by bots all the time, so I'm always trying to check to see if it's a real person or not. Uh, blog, driving sales, do a refresh. If you don't belong to blogs like these, get on it. I'm going to give you a secret I didn't put in the webinar because it's one of mine. Uh, HubSpot can be your best friend. HubSpot, just Google it, H-U-B-S-P-O-T, make it your best friend. When you go there, they're going to try to get you to sign up for a CRM. Don't do that. That's not what we're there for. You're there to go to their blog section. This is a company, a marketing genius company that works outside automotive. Here's a tip. Do as much training as you can outside of automotive so that you're different. HubSpot does email examples, subject line examples. They've tested them in their own marketing company, and they work. You can subscribe to their blog, and they'll send you something every day, and it'll tell you right on the blog, two-minute read, three-minute read, five-minute read. Guys, we don't even pee anymore without doing a level of candy hands. Like, read the blog while you're peeing. I use it for inspiration. It's free. Look outside of our industry. Webinars. Dealer on is my favorite webinar, and not because I'm on it today. I participate in it because I don't know if you guys know this, uh, and I'll give you a little secret, but Dealer on is one of the few webinar companies, a few companies, period, that does all the amazing things they do that doesn't let people pay for a spot on their show, which means you're only getting high-quality people just like you. And we get to come back when people demand it, not because we wrote a $500 check, okay? Digital dealer, look at their webinars too. Networking events, events, conferences. If you get to go to a conference, if your dealer is one that will send you, or if you invest in yourself, I'm going to tell you, don't go to the classes and then sit in your room because the very best people you meet are at the bar, having the drink, after the conference, sitting at a table, having real conversations. I got to where I am today because I went to the bar with them. I'm not saying be an alcoholic. If you have a problem with drinking, have a water with lemon, okay? But have those conversations. Be where people are, not just at the round table, okay? Be where people are. Action items for today that I want you guys to do. Please commit to solving a roadblock within seven days. Do not say I can't. Do not say I won't. Do not say I don't have time. Get out of your own way. Measure your metrics. Identify the opportunity for growth and create a real plan. Do not say I need 57 more appointments. Instead, say, how many people do I have to talk to to get one so I know how many calls I have to make to get to that number? How many people did I talk to set an appointment? Break it down. Stop doing things by the month. I hate it that we sell cars by the month. And we're like, oh, I sold 36 cars this month. That's great that you sold 36 cars last month. But if you want to get to 45, you probably should know how you got to 36. Customize the process in your CRM. Just do it. If you don't know how, make your vendor do it. Here's the secret about vendors. They will work harder for you if you make them. Because a lot of people have 50 clients, account managers from CRMs, all these companies, they'll have 50 people underneath them. And they might do the right thing for all 50, but I promise you the 10 people who stand up and say, I absolutely want you to do this, will get it over and over again. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. If they tell you no, ask again. You are in sales. We are selling or being sold. Black thing, you can partner with me. As a friend, as a client, as a relationship, I don't care. That's my hashtag, partner with Bobby. You can see the kinds of smart ass stuff that I post or that people have posted for me uh, and that people collaborate with me on. So please use it. All right, Aliana, that was the shortest webinar ever that I've ever done. You're a liar. All right, Bobby, you're amazing. And we're going to try and get to as many uh, of your questions as we can today, audience. So if you have a question, get your questions in. Uh, before we do that, though, I do want to bring your attention over to the handout section. Yes, as Bobby has said, there is a copy of her slide deck in there. So look on your GoToWebinar interface. Look for the word that says handouts. There's a little triangle next to that word. It's probably pretty low, uh, almost at the bottom of your GoToWebinar interface. Look for the word that says handouts. Open it up. In there, you're going to find two great handouts for you. One is Bobby Heron's slide deck. Yes. Get that downloaded for you because there was so much information in that. The other one is that car buyer journey study. Um, Bobby, who did you say that car buyer journey study was by? So that car buyer journey study was done by Cox Automotive. They do it every year. Uh, so that's last year. This is where a lot of the staff came from. Don't trick yourself into thinking, oh, it's Auto Trader, so it's probably geared towards Auto Trader. No, it's a real study. They are under scrutiny so often for studies like that that you can trust those results because 57 people in legal are asking to make sure. And I wanted it to be easy for you guys to see it if you're trying to create buy-in or if you just want the self-awareness, so it is included in there. Okay. All right. So um, both of those are in there. They're available for media download, and you are able to download those until the end of this broadcast. I have no idea when that's going to be. So look, we're going to go through... <laughs> 
we're going to give away a prize and then we're going to do some questions. If you can hang on, well, shoot, we'd love it if you could. If you can't, it's okay. I know we're running extremely long today and we'll be getting that link out to all of you as well as putting it up online at uh, dealeron.com slash webinar. All right. So hopefully you'll stick around because usually the Q&A session is even more enlightening than sometimes the presentation is. All right. And, uh... Eliana, what's funny too, I just want to tell you guys, I, I tell you, I lead by example, I practice what I preach, I told you to stop asking for forgiveness and ask for permission, I didn't ask Eliana if we could go late on this webinar, so if you just come <laughs> message her and say things like, I appreciate that you stayed on so long, Eliana, so we could get all this knowledge, that would be great. Okay, alright, alright, now it's time to give away that prize, are you ready, babe? Yes. Oh my gosh, okay. It's that time. If you missed it at the beginning of the webinar, I announced that our good friends at Zima Drive, they're giving away a totally awesome prize. One of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win a Nintendo Switch. Hottest game on the market. I was not kidding. My son was super happy when he got this. This is an excellent prize, especially with the holidays right around the corner. If you want to get this, all you have to do is be the first person to write in the correct response, and you will be winning this awesome prize. It's valued at over $400. It is crazy. We're going to ask that if you are a vendor, however, to kindly sit this out. This prize is intended for dealership personnel only, but we love having you on the show. You're always welcome at our dealer on webinars, of course. Okay, everyone, good luck. This is not an easy question. I hope you guys took great notes. Bobby, are you ready for this question? We're good with this question? Oh my gosh. I know. Is... I am so ready. Okay. All right. Here we go. Good luck. All right. And you're going to be doing a lot of typing. Make sure it's accurate. If it's not accurate, I can't give you the prize. All right? Good luck, everyone. Bobby <laughs> said there were six metrics that you need to measure for leads that never responded or engaged. She wants you to name three of them. Bobby said there were six metrics you need to measure for leads that never responded or engaged. Name three of them. Oh I love goodness. this question. You're I love people. this question so much because I, I'm i telling you, if you learned nothing today, if you took no notes and you learned nothing, if you learned at least three of those things, you'll do better. You'll give yourself a raise. You'll help the people around you. It's so important. I, uh, hold on. I'm trying to see if this person, the first person who wrote in, I'm trying to see if, um, I don't think that's the answer, Julie. How many, <laughs> Wait, maybe it is. Hold on. Um, how many you total want to to me? <laughs> uh, What is your average response time in minutes? Yes. How many first responses were personalized? Yes. Yes. And what percent of the time that a question was asked in the initial lead did you address it? Yes. Game on. Hell yeah. Julie Taylor. With the, for the win, Julie Taylor. And just for the record, yes, you were the very first person to write in a response, and you got it right. Julie Taylor, congratulations. You have won a spectacular Thanks. prize from our good friends over at Zmont Drive. While you're high-fiving everyone in your office, I do need you to send me your mailing address as well as the name of your dealership so I can give you a proper congratulations. So hopefully you can type that up real fast. All right. Um, I just, love that, Julie. Uh, send, your, send your dealer address, but send me your home address, too. And that way... and let Eliana know where you'd like it to go. I know sometimes dealerships grab prizes and don't give them to the right people. I'm not saying your dealer is one of them, no. but I want to make sure it comes right to you. People don't do that. Oh, okay. All the time. Okay, just so we know, I'm going to read the question and all the answers. Bobby said there were six metrics you need to measure for leads that never responded or engaged. Here's all six of them. How many total internet leads did you have that did not engage or respond? What is your average response time in minutes? How many first responders, I'm sorry, how many first responses were personalized? What percent of the time that a question was asked in the initial lead did you address it in the first response? How many times did you attempt personalized follow-up past seven days? And the sixth one is how many times did you follow up past 21 days with a personalized response? Congratulations, Julie Taylor. You got three of those. I still don't know. Uh, we'll send it to me now, so I know what dealership you're from, Julie. But yes, you can email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. Uh, oh, Julie is with Acura Pickering. No idea where that is. Is that in, I don't know, where's Pickering? 
Illinois maybe? I don't know. I'm going to call it Illinois until Julie tells me otherwise. Oh, you're in Ontario. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I love it. International superstar, Julie. Good job. Good job, Julie. You are, uh, after this presentation, you and everyone else on here is one step closer to becoming a lead handling rock star. So, Julie, congratulations to you over at Acura Pickering in Ontario. And, of course, we want to thank all of our audience members for playing along today. Um, I know we only had one really great prize to give away today, but you know what? We give away cool prizes every week, so come on back to another Dealer on webinar, and that could be the day that you win a cool prize. Today, though, it's Julie Taylor's day from Ontario at Acura Pickering, and we want to congratulate her, and of course, we've got to thank our good friends over at Zmot Drive for their incredible generosity. All right, let's get to some of those questions. You ready, Bobby? Let's put on your webcam. All right. <laughs> oh my God! So many. I'm trying. Already. I'm trying. All right. Am I on the right slide? Yeah. This is like early on in your presentation when you were talking about non-responsive leads and how many do you yeah. get? And remember, we asked that poll question, right? So he says, "Well, my non-responsive leads blend in, blend into month after month. So when you're measuring, do you are you counting the ones from the month before that still haven't answered, yeah, or so are you doing just doing it like, okay, June? This is how many didn't respond in June." Yeah, so I will tell you that's an awesome question. It shows how much you're paying attention. Uh, when I do this to create action plans with clients, or even for myself, I look at it the month before, the total from the month before, so I can get an accurate count. But for you, it's whatever you want to count. If you want to go back 90 days to start and do it that way, that's okay too. I just find 30-day chunks are a little bit better to be able to look at it, because when you're gauging those metrics, most of the CRMs are set up to be able to give it to you monthly. So it's on you, babe. But I would start with at least 30 days. All right, Craig. And then he has a follow-up question. He says, my biggest problem is fake information. Not all fake, but like yeah. half fake. Does that make sense? What category do you put those in? What bucket does that go in? <laughs> so that's the customer you really want when they're giving you fake information. Why is that the customer like, you want? <laughs> because that customer is a buyer who doesn't want to be sold. And so they're looking for an answer without having to talk to you. It's usually either that they gave a fake phone number, a fake email, or they give you a fake name. Just ask them. If you don't have a phone number and you have an email address, just say to them, hey, I got a phone number for you, but the phone number that you gave me isn't the right one. I'm assuming it's because you don't want a million dealers calling you. Good news. I'm the right one. Give me the phone number, and we can have a conversation. If you find that you're getting a lot of those, though, because that should be the one-off. You shouldn't be experiencing that a lot. If you're experiencing that a lot, you need to reevaluate the source that it's coming from, the company that it's coming from, and make sure that they're giving you a real ROI. Uh, and if you want to reach out to me, I'll jump on a phone call with you uh, and kind of walk you through where to find that and what that can mean when you see it happening. So happy to do that. Craig, don't let that opportunity pass you by. That's an awesome opportunity. Thank you, Bobby. That's always so kind of you. <laughs> All right, so um, John wanted you to know that he tracks all of his department leads separate from the CRM. He uses Google Sheets, and those are his main yeah. metrics. And by the way, he also wanted you to know he loved your presentation. All right. Thank you, <laughs> no John. Uh, all real right. quick, Eliana, John, uh, if you're doing that manually, is it because your CRM is old school, or is it because you don't trust the metrics inside of it? And if you can answer that, that'd be awesome. And if not, reach out to me and let's talk about that because there's some ways that you can make that work better depending on the CRM that you're on. But I love it that you're inspecting what you expect and you're measuring your metrics. Good job. All right. All right. Great. All right. Ariel uh, says, how do we measure first response time for less than five minutes if we're measuring data 24-7? With our system, we can set dealership hours and measure first response within that for our monthly analysis. It seems it will either be one or the other. Which would be better? That's from Ariel. Uh, actually, yeah, Ariel, that's a great question. I wish you knew what CRM you were on because I can give you a little bit more guidance on it. But most CRMs have the ability in the back end to create a customized report that can be ran for during hours versus non-during hours. And if you're not answering personally during non-open uh, hours and it's just a first response that's an autoresponder, that one doesn't matter anyway. Uh, but usually what you're looking for to start, break this down into chunks, right? In a perfect world, you want to know the difference between both. But if you're just getting started, allow yourself to look at the overall and then break it down from there. Some CRMs won't allow it and you have to do it manually. But again, I'm, I'm, if I know your CRM, I'm happy to help you with that. So reach out to me and I will. All right, Ariel. Again, 
I would not pass up that opportunity. All right. Next uh, one comes in from Dan. He says, I'm the internet manager, so I respond to leads to set appointments every day. Oh, thank you for that. Awesome. Right. Nick wants you to know he loves your after hours template. <laughs> thank you. Um, and Elise Capart is on here. She says, Hi, Bobby and Eliana. I can't wait to see the rest of your content. Okay, thank you so much, Elise. She also posted on Facebook, by the way. I know that for it. Oh, good. Um, oh, um, your after hours template. Nick also said he's going to try and tailor their uh, template towards that because he really liked it a lot. Good. All right. Good. Thank um, you, Nick. Yeah, just personalize it and it works really well. Michael says, I'll have what Bobby's having. <laughs> I have a lot of energy, so just so you guys know, if, you, if you've ever met me in person or seen me on stage, people are always like, how do you have all this energy? I take a lot of vitamin D super complex. I, don't, I try not to put crap into my body, but like, I like cupcakes, so it can be a problem. So <laughs> vitamin D, that's my secret superpower, I promise you, just take it. All right, there you go. All right, um, Katie wants to know, when is Bobby's Why Buy webinar? <laughs> and just so you know, Katie, we have done a couple of Why Buy webinars with our good friends over at um, mm, God, Justin Brunn and Ben Kohler are from, what is the name of their company? I don't know, but I know how we could know. If you guys are listening and you want to go to Why Buy webinar, go to the URL on to the webinar section. And look through the archive stuff. Yeah. There's some seriously badass content in there. But I love a why buy message. It's my favorite thing in the whole world. So <laughs> we'll see. Eventually, one day we're going to get to it again. Uh, but but uh, Dynamic Beacon. Oh gosh, that's it. Okay, so Dynamic Beacon did a really phenomenal why buy webinar. So if you want to check that one out, I mean, very well done. And they don't talk nearly as fast as Bobby. So. <laughs> Okay, next question comes in, well not question, but a comment came in from William. He says, our BDC reps get cell phone notifications for after hours opportunities that come in and respond for a quick reply. It comes right through the CRM mobile app. That's awesome. That is uh, awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Do you happen to know how many different maybe CRMs have an app like that that can, that can do that for dealers? So uh, there's five that I know of that do it really well. Uh, then Solutions and Dealers Pack do a really good job with it too. I'll tell you one of the challenges that people experience when they set this up uh, for texting is you'll have people that say, oh, the texts don't come through to my phone. Here's a tip. Two years ago when that started being a thing, everybody at Sprint or T-Mobile or Verizon, when you called in, they knew why. Now they don't. They don't experience it as often. But a couple of years ago, the cell phone providers blocked five-digit codes for you as a courtesy. And what they should be telling you is, you have to have it unblocked. If you're a Vin Solutions user, then you can manually go in and send the thing that says manually opt in right to your phone. It'll it'll pass through. But if for some reason you're not getting the text to your phone when you call the provider, like Sprint or whoever it is, they're going to be like, I don't know. Here's the answer. It's a block that was put on your phone. Ask for it to be removed. Thank you so much. Great answer, Bobby. All right. Thank you so much, Bill. Love it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next one. Question. First, hi, Bobby and Eliana. Oh, thanks, Adam. Hi. Uh, hoping, hoping to see you both at DSES. Unfortunately, I will not be there. Bobby, you're going to be there? I'll be there. Yeah. So if you want to go do that bar thing where you network, I'm your girl. I'm going to have a card. My wife gives me a credit card. Just get it out there now. All right, Adam says, my question is, what is your opinion? Should our lead forms require both phone number and email feeds, email fields to be filled out or just email w required? Okay. Yeah, so here's the thing. No, they should not. They absolutely should not. You really? have on average, yeah, here's why. I'm going to give you like these average things. So let's say you have 5,000 visitors to your website every month, and let's say 2,000 of them go to a PDP, a vehicle display page, or an SRP, a search results page. Of those people, you're getting a very small percentage of people that are actually filling in a lead. Like something like 2% is the average conversion, no matter how good you do. When we say you have to give me a phone mail, you have to give me an email, that customer that doesn't want to goes into Google and finds somebody who doesn't make sense. So if your OEM website, some of your OEM websites even make them give an address. What some selfish shit is that? That's for your pump in, pump out reports. That's us thinking about us and not the customer. Give them the option. And if the form looks like it has to be included, most customers are going to fill it in. But the customer who doesn't want to give the extra information is going to just fill in one of them. We do that because we want to get somebody on the phone. But if you communicate with them quickly, efficiently, with good experience, and you give them what they want in the email, you have the right to ask for the phone number. You might lose two, three, four people that didn't put the phone number in, but 
you're going to gain a percentage of people who wanted to stay anonymous and don't want to be fooled on the phone that you get mm -hmm. to create a relationship with. So, yeah, no, always think about what it would be for the customer and not for us, and you'll win every time. Great advice. Thank you so much. Adam, great okay. question. Thank you so much. All right, next question comes to you from Ashley. She says, as a group who doesn't negotiate, I ne never thought of the offer like that. What if they are trying to stay at a payment? They were quoted mm -hmm. elsewhere. I love that perspective. Thank you, Ashley. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> next one comes in from Lisa. She says, what's the most effective way to follow up with prospects? Phone, text, email, or all of the above? Okay. So this is kind of a loaded question, and here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you a real legal disclaimer when I do this. One. Texting is amazing. It increases the communication. It's faster. It's more responsive. It's engaging. It's also illegal if you're not doing it right. I can't go into a whole concept on that for you guys, uh, but I'll tell you there's a real legal barrier there. So not saying don't do it. I'm saying do it legally. With that being said, absolutely texting, absolutely a phone call, then an email. An email, a written form of communication will not showcase your skills unless you add a video. It's not going to say, you're not going to see me like, hey, you're going to see me like, Hi, my name is Bobby, and I'm like writing this email. That's the difference, guys. So if you're putting video in your email, huge. If you're not, the goal is to call first, then send an email based on the call or the lack of interaction. Opt them in for texting and try that too. But always, always, always in day one and day two, end your autoresponder, your first response, any of that with what is your preferred method of communication. If I tell you my preferred method of communication is texting, which by the way, if you call me, I'm not going to answer. I'm always on the phone. So don't leave me a voicemail either. I hate voicemails. So the no, missed call. Seriously. Is the it's it's, the it's a real struggle to get a hold of Bobby Heron. <laughs> seriously, like, send me a text. Send me a text. But, uh, here's, so here's the deal. If I tell you that texting is my uh, preferred method of communication, that doesn't mean you should try to call me. It means you should try to text me first, right? You're always going to want to use that first method and then try it that way. But the goal of an email is to create an engaging conversation that gets somebody on the phone. And then from there, to either deliver them something out or to set a time for them to come in. As long as you follow that, you'll be golden. But texting is key as long as it's legal. Okay. Lisa, I hope that answers your question. All right. Next one comes in from Shelly. Oh, not a question. Bobby's always informative and entertaining. Her personality is what Thank brings you. it alive and helps it stick. Oh, I agree, yeah. Shelly. I'm good for my confidence today. Could you just like, hang out with me all the time and tell me I'm great? That'd be, oh, maybe talk to my 17-year-old daughter because she disagrees with you. <laughs> She's a teenager. All right, next one comes in from Thomas. He says, two questions. What do you think of finishing the first response with a closed-end question about coming to the dealership for a test drive? And then... I hate should... it. What? I hate it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to tell, tell you why. If I am looking at vehicles online and I'm reaching out for a question, this is going to be kind of harsh for some people to hear because I'm not going to be nice about it, guys. Here's the thing. If I say to a customer, would you like to come in for a test drive or we're open until 6 tomorrow would you like to come in for a test drive or I'm here until 2 what time can you come in that's not about the customer it's about us they already know you're open they already know they can come in for a test drive we haven't earned the right yet at that point to ask them to come in and do something with us because as of right now we're not their only choice I'm not saying don't ask in the email I'm saying end it with something else that's engaging because if you end it with something closed the manners matter thing doesn't work right they don't have to respond and then the other part of it is those customers that are sending in an email they're the same customers walking through your door. They're just not there yet. If they wanted like an immediate engagement, they would have called, but they know that that creates a conversation that they don't want to get locked into. So it's like, give them the answers to what they have. Tell them that the car is popular and you want to make sure it's available. Show them that you're willing to work for them and then end with something that will elicit your next response. So if you want it to be an appointment that's coming in, you should just ask the customer, what are your next steps? Tell the customer in the email, I want to earn your business. I understand that people research, that they follow a certain pattern, that you're educating yourself. But when you're ready, I want to be your choice. What research have you already done? What step are you on? Because when you're ready to come in and do a test drive, I'm your person and tell them it like that. But, yeah, don't, don't end it with a closed-ended uh, come in and see us. And I think that's a great question because I can guarantee you at least half of the people still on the call either have that in a template or they've been trained to do it that way because uh, the big OEM uh, approved vendors like to teach that. So just keep that in mind. Okay, follow-up question from Thomas, because he did say he had two questions. Follow-up question is, should the why buy be integrated into your first response? Yeah, good job, Thomas. Yes, always. <laughs> Here's the deal. If you, have, if you have 10 why buys on your website, or if you have three, it doesn't matter. Make sure they're on your website. 
make sure they live on a Wi-Fi page, make sure they show on the front, make sure they're a CPA, and then put them inside of that email. And what I always tell people is this, you can either under the signature line uh, put a link that says read about why other people buy from us or why people choose us. Try to stay away from the word buy. We use it a lot in our industry, but it's a charge word. People don't like to own things, but they don't like to buy things because it costs them money. So we call it a why buy internally, uh, but it really is a why choose us. Why are we different? So you can put it as a link underneath and link to your website. If you don't have it on your website yet, call your vendor. Make them put it on there. They'll do it. And if they try to charge you, it's super sweet and tell them that you made it done. I promise they'll do it for you. Uh, <laughs> but legal disclaimer, I'm not allowed to make promises, but it's true. Uh, but you can also take the top three things and put them underneath the signature line as the top three reasons to choose us and line them out. Stay away from the following things. We have the biggest inventory. No, you don't. The internet does. We have great CSI. Yeah, you trained everybody the last 10 cards they bought that if it wasn't going to be perfect not to send in the survey, they're not buying that shit. But they believe online reviews. We're family owned. That's great if you want to work there, but a customer doesn't care if you're family owned. If they did, all the Ace True Value Hardware, Little Meat Markets, all these amazing little boutiques, they wouldn't go out of business if they go to Target. We're assholes as people. Don't do that. Uh, create unique value propositions that make you different. And you know what? I'll tell you a little secret. There's not a lot that makes dealerships different between them, even with the Wi-Fi, but you've got reasons you make it different. Don't say things like service after the sale. What does that even mean? We say that in dealerships all the time. Like, uh, you can still service your car here if you didn't buy it here. People know that. That's not a secret. But you might be an outstanding person that really, truly delivers service after the sale, like picking up a car if a customer can't, or offering to go to their home and pick it up. Or being the person that if somebody breaks down in the town, you will go help them out with their with their tire change. What makes you special, you need to know. And since we're not going to talk a lot about why buy, but if you don't know what it is, pull up your reviews online and let your customers tell you why you're special. Because it looks a lot different than you think it does. Even the most confident people, uh, I'm one of them. I'm not cocky, but I'm very confident. And I have a hard time telling people I'm so awesome. Other than like, hey, I'm awesome, hang out with me. So, <laughs> yes, 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 use it. And Go ahead and make up a personalized template, personalized boats for you, not a template, right, in the general sense, and put it in there. That'd be a great, you put it in the bottom of the day one, right, little underneath the signature line. Put it in the middle of day two. Go into your CRM to your actual signature line and make it be on everything that gets responded to. It's a great question. Thomas says, great answers. Thank you. I'm going to reach you. out to you soon. <laughs> Thank you, it. Thomas. Thank you. Okay, a few more questions and then we'll, we'll start closing out the show, all right? Arielle says, a webinar on dealership marketing and PR would be really interesting. Not advertising and pricing, et cetera, but like right. real PR and events and stuff. Thank you for Love your, that. Thank you for your opinion on that. Yeah, this, this is the kind of stuff you guys have to put into the, the survey that comes in after the webinar is yeah. done. Please so do that really helps us out. Ariel. Yeah, please do. Arielle, since you uh, kind of gave that feedback, here's something. On your social media channel, this is free, you do it internally, don't get with your company to do it, do it yourself. Uh, Dana Hayes, who is a woman that I love, who works on a team with me at Garber for years and years, she used to go one day a week to all of the dealerships, or one day a month, I'm sorry, and she had this chalkboard that she got at Hobby Lobby, it's like a $10 investment, right? And she went around, and every time it was somebody's birthday or their anniversary, at the beginning of the month, she went to them and they held the sign, and some people were like, she can't believe you make me hold the sign, great for the comments, great to put in the thing. But she did it, and then she posted it on our uh, social media pages, this was a collaborative effort by the entire department that went around and did it and what happened was people like to see celebrations for people they like. So all of a sudden, Dana's on the page and we say to Dana, Dana, your, your birthday today, please don't like it. Dana likes it, it shows in your news feed. All of her friends and family are like, oh, this is so cool, I'm just say Dana. Now everything that you post in the regular time shows, on, uh, shows in their algorithm. It's cheap, it's easy, and it also shows your employees that you care. Because we do care, and we spend a lot of time in dealerships pretending like we don't. We do every once in a while a birthday party in the uh, in the conference room, and it's usually for somebody in the office or somebody brings in a cake. Showcase that stuff. Let the people watching you know that you're a real person, and for the people that work there, that's real PR. So start with that. Very nice. Okay, thank you so much. Um, okay, next one. Camille says, "What was the name of the blog that you had mentioned?" It's HubSpot. Yeah. HubSpot. Yeah. Okay, H-U-B-S-P-O-T. All right, good luck with that. Diane, Diane, how are you? She says, how can I share this webinar? It's such great content. Well, first, download the slides from the handout section, and then later on today, after this webinar concludes and I can finally get it up online, it will be able to be found on dealeron.com slash webinar in the archive section. You'll also get a link to that recording sent to you later today. Thank you, Diane. Yeah, share it with everyone. It's awesome, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, please do. 
Uh, next one comes in from Shannon. She says, thank you so much for the great webinar. It makes me want to walk into a store and take over. That's right. You got this. Just walk in like... I got this. What do you mean? <laughs> okay. Ashley says, one of our huge struggles is customers who hang up on us. And it happens a lot. Why do they inquire? I don't even, I didn't even know that was a thing. People hang up? Yeah. So here's the thing. They're hanging up uh, most of the time. I could, I could do a, like a personal thing with you, but most of the time they're hanging up because your form page on your website required them to put in a phone number and that's not how they wanted to communicate because they don't want to get locked into a conversation. They've either had a bad experience in the past, they know you're going to hand them off when they get there, or they're not ready to get involved in that type of conversation, so they want to do it through email. I'll tell you what I do to people who hang up on me, so at your own risk because I'm kind of stuffy like this. I will call somebody back or send them a text and I'll say, listen, I know a million people have called you uh, and you probably just don't want to deal with it. I can stop calling you and we can communicate through email if you prefer to. Or I'll say to somebody, hey, we must have had disconnected. And I'll leave them a voice, we must have disconnected. Would you prefer I send you an email? Because that customer did send in that information. Short of having a bad vendor, which is not very often, they did send it in. That's just not how they want to communicate, so you're probably experiencing that. And most mm -hmm. of the time, women in BDC areas experience it less than men uh, because it's easier to be a jerk to a guy over the phone than it is to a girl. That's just the truth. It's not sexist. It's not an HR thing. It's just true. So when you experience that, put together a personalized uh, email template for each person in your BDC or yourself with their own personality that calls out the customer for hanging up, that recognizes that often that happens because they had to put in a phone number and that's not how they wanted to communicate, and then just tell them the truth. Just say, I understand why it happens, but I really do want to work with you, and I'm not here to pressure you. I'm your advocate. I'm on your side. I'm like your realtor, right? Would you like me to communicate with you by email or text instead? What would be better for you? And what questions can I answer that you haven't gotten answers to yet? And show them that you're different and give them a chance to really pick you. Yeah. Uh, great question and amazing answer, yeah. Bobby. Thank you so Hi. much. Ashley, I hope that helped you out. Much luck to you. All right, next question comes in from Angelina. She says, what is your metric that you go by when talking leads per rep? Love it. So I think the question she's asking is how many should they take? Yeah. Uh, and usually that's a really common question. So it's different if you're a salesperson or a hybrid, if you're setting for yourself and also selling. It's mm -hmm. different if you're a BDC agent who's only handling internet leads versus phone calls. But here's the standard average metrics. If you're a BDC person who's only handling internet leads that are coming in, you shouldn't be handling more than 150. If you're a salesperson or a hybrid, it shouldn't be more than 75. Here's why, right? Let's say you have 150. Let's say half of them aren't going to respond to you and you're not going to get them to engage and it leaves 75. Of the 75, you might get half that are going to respond and be buyers in this month or tell you to like hit the door running. So now we're down to like, I'm not good at math, but let's say it's 32. Let's just go with a regular number of 30, okay? Next month, when you have the next 150, you also have the 30 from the previous month. Let's say half of those fall off. Now I have 15 plus the other 30. And in order to uh, follow up for a full 90 to 180 days and not be overwhelmed with tasks, because most CRMs are not set up right, they're set up as a burden and not an opportunity, they're a chore task and not a real opportunity, you're getting hit all day long with these tasks and it ends up being like, how many can I clear out before the end of the day so that I'm done, instead of how many real conversations can I interact with and have. So those are the maximum numbers. I would tell you, if your CRM is customized, it's not plug and play, it's sending out best practices, and you have a strong BDC and you're working a lot of stuff, even then, you want to either lower that number by 10, or if you've got somebody really effing shit, go up by 10, but try to stay in that window of 20 based on how long your follow-up is. But, but 150 is the max, and if you're experiencing more than that, then what ends up happening by natural human behavior, I don't care how awesome you are, is you get cherry picking. It's our normal behavior to do that. If I have to make 100 calls, I'm obviously gonna make the 10 I think are gonna engage first, even I'm going to do that, right? But what will happen is you'll miss out on some opportunities that would have come to fruition when you have more than that. It's a struggle in a lot of stores because a lot of people are getting four, five, six hundred leads in plus phone calls, and there's two or three people in the BDC, and the dealer is like, what do you mean you can't handle it? I'm paying these two people. We didn't do that before. Right. So when that happens to you, evaluate the ones that are happening quicker, the sources that are working faster for you, and eliminate some of the lead sources that you have that aren't, not because they're not working, but because you don't have time to convert them. But. Angelina, I hope that answered your question. Uh, if you have a follow-up question, hurry up and get it in, because we're going to be closing out the show very shortly. All right, from today's winner, Julie, oh, she says, by the way, Angelina says, yes, thank you so much. 
Um, awesome. Today's winner, Julie, she says, I've been to a few webinars, but this is my very favorite, and it's my very first time oh. winning. So thank you so oh, much for that, Julie. Um, Julie also wants to know if Bobby is going to be speaking in Vegas at Driving Sales. I am. Thank you. That's a great question. Yes, I will be at Driving Sales. I fly in Saturday, and I fly out Wednesday morning. I'm speaking on Tuesday afternoon, and I'm actually talking about recruiting and retention. I cover a whole bunch, myriad of stuff. But if you're going to be there, text me. My number is right on the screen. Like, let's hook up. Let's have a grab. Let's grab a drink in the afternoon or a sandwich. Let's do something at night. Uh, networking <laughs> is my favorite thing there. So I mean it when I say that. I'm not going to try to sell you anything. I just want to be your friend. All right, Julie, take her up on that. I can attest to you. Yeah. She is a load of fun. All right. Next question comes in from Melissa. Melissa says, we have a virtual assistant that's main focus is to confirm contact information. I found the prospects answers her more than the actual humans in the store. What's the best way to get the prospect to stop interacting with her, the virtual assistant, and start engaging with us in the BDC? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I don't know if she can answer this for me, but if you can, tell me. If not, I'll just give you a different answer. Uh, you're probably using a system similar to like Conversica or used to be Ava. They've got a couple different names for it. Uh, but either way, if, if you're looking at that, two things. One, those bots are using AI, and they're responding typically at what would be the best point in contact for the customer. So they're doing like, oh, I'm going to respond at 3 o'clock because that that's when the lead came in. So the next day when I try, it's going to be the same thing. Oh, yeah, she did, she did say yes, Conversica. Awesome. I got an even better plan for you then. Okay. So in the first response that goes out from Conversica, it's short and sweet. It's super short and sweet, and it's not asking the customer for anything that's for us. It's only for them. That's why they're engaging with it. It's fast and it's doing that. When they engage beyond that first day, it's happening at the time, typically, that the customer sent something in, not when it's convenient for us, so they get an answer. So <laughs> let me give you this. You're using a company like that, uh, and I'm not giving an opinion on using the company either way. Make mm -hmm. sure that in your CRM, there's a process set up designed for that company so they're not falling into the wrong category. Make sure that your receptionist knows and your salespeople know what name you gave it. You name that product when you get it. Like you're like, oh, that's Mary Beth. So when somebody calls the dealership and they're like, can I talk to Mary Beth? A lot of times the receptionist or the sales board doesn't know who Mary Beth is. So Mary Beth doesn't work here. They don't know the transfer that called to the BDC. It happens all the time. Make sure everybody knows that your team is Mary Beth. So if they call in off of it, they transfer it to your team and you get credit for it. Second, short and sweet wins the game. I am not a fan of having auto stuff on during the day. So I don't know if you know this or not or if you guys made this decision consciously, but you can have Conversica or Mary Beth only answer when the dealership is closed for a first response and then tailor your first response to have a question similar to that at the end and then turn it on to pick up the follow-up because it makes your life easier, right? Because remember, you're Mary Beth. But you want the follow-up to continue, but you want that first response to be able to come from you. All of that stuff is customizable inside of their system. So all you have to do is ask for it. Uh, and then look at those times and how you're replying and keep it super short and sweet, and you'll start to get the same effect. Yeah. Melissa, do you have a follow-up question? You better hurry up and get it in. But I thought that was a great <laughs> answer. Bobby, you are just Thank you. nailing this on the, on the head. I love right. it. These love it, too. All right, Natalie wanted me to tell you that this webinar was very informative, and she wanted me to tell you thank you so much. Thank you. Um, thank you. By, by the way, William wrote in, and he said LHLAR, which I'm pretty sure means Lead Handling Like a Rockstar 2.0, is way better <laughs> than the first one, and it was phenomenal in and of itself. Thank you, ladies. Thank Thanks you, to William. I, yeah, thank I, you, William. I just came here for the show. I mean, she did all the heavy lifting. I'll take credit too. All right, I'm just here for the show. <laughs> all right, Melissa wanted me to tell you thank you, and Camille Bobby. says agreed. Bobby is on fire. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Bobby. Freaking amazing. Yeah. <laughs> You almost it. made me say the F word. It was awesome. I was hoping you were going to slip. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> okay. I, I never have to sweat it with you. Now, listen, I'm going to try and get you back on the show as quickly as possible. Maybe early Love January, it. if you like it. Yeah. So you can just yeah. start writing your webinar description right now and send it over to me as quickly as possible because Love obviously it. you have a following who wants to hear what you have to say. And, you know, Love they it. have to write really fast if they're going to want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> so, um, Phenomenal presentation. I couldn't Thank ask you. 
Thank you. you. And I hope that you guys send in on your survey what you want the next webinar to be. If you want it to be bucket one, if you want deeper responses on just what templates should be, if you want it to be why buy, tell me what you want to hear and I'll talk about it for you. I think that would be a great idea. All right, um, audience, that's right. We're going to be sending out a survey in just a moment. Before we do that, though, I do want to remind you, if you have any opportunity to call on Bobby, as you can tell, she is the sharpest, wittiest, and nicest person probably in the entire automotive industry. Thank you. I can't think of a better resource, honestly. So if you like what you heard today and you need more Bobby, hey, I totally <laughs> get it. But her contact information is there. And you know, work with Bobby. So partner with me. OK, we're going to be sending out that um, uh, Oh, wait, before we do that, go to the next slide. Yeah, we're going to be sending out that survey, and it's only three questions. But one of the questions on there is for you to rate today's presentation and give us your feedback. So if that includes, uh, you know, another topic that you would like Bobby to cover, yeah, we need that kind of That's perfect information. So do that. Fill out that that uh, survey for us. It really, really helps us out. Yeah. All right. Um, by the way, Bobby's going to be presenting at DSES, but she's also going to be at the upcoming Women in Automotive Conference, an amazing event. It's yeah. December 10th and 11th in Palm Springs. It's going to be gorgeous over there and just perfect for right before the crazy yeah. holiday season. Um, focused on training and retaining women in our industry to improve their skills and advance their careers, find the highest levels of success. You want to make your way to Palm Springs? I'm going to be there too. I'll be emceeing this amazing event. So we'd love to see you there. For more information, yeah. check out womeninautomotive.com. We hope to see you there. And yes, the beard and the hair. I love mm -hmm. those guys. They're headed back to Vegas next week to host some sweet breakout sessions at the Driving Sales Executive Summit. It's going to be at the Bellagio, and they're going to be co-presenting Dr. Feelgood's Rockin' Prescriptions to keep your digital marketing off the crazy train. That's right. So I if you want to know more, I know. They're so great together, too. If you want to know more, go to DSES.com. We hope to see you there. And invitations will be going out tomorrow for our next Dealer On webinar. I'm going to tell you right now, all the webinars, like in the in Q4, October, November, December, they are all amazing. I try and stack yeah. them up that way because it's the end of the year. So whether you're trying to close out your year strong or you're trying to get ready for 2018, I'm telling you the best webinar presenters are October, November, and December. And next week's is no exception. This one's titled, The Secret Formula for Customer Loyalty and Employee Retention. The Secret Formula for Customer Loyalty and Employee Retention? Come on, does that really exist? Well, let me tell you, industry veteran Matt Koenig says it does. In fact, he says that there are two simple strategies that curb employee turnover, boost customer loyalty, and increase profits. Two, that's it. In this powerful webinar, Matt will share the two simple adjustments that you can make to help your dealership to the next level without increasing your ad spend, and you may even save thousands of dollars every year. He's going to share the incredible secret formula that could be a game changer for your dealership. Attendees of this inspired one-hour session will learn how to improve morale and keep your team motivated, get your sales get more sales year over year, stay top of mind with current customers, and develop better relationships within your dealership, and all this while boosting customer loyalty through better communication. Wow, in two steps? I gotta see this. Are you ready to sell more cars, make more money, get more loyal customers, and stop losing good quality salespeople? Whew, heck yeah you are. Don't you dare miss yeah. the secret formula for customer loyalty and employee retention. So I'll register be on now. that one. I know, right? I'll be Don't forget to that one for sure. Dealeron's weekly webinars are held Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding our webinars and our topics, well, hey, I'd love to hear from you. My name is Eliana Raggio. You can find me anywhere online. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, you name it. I'm on all the automotive social networks, or you know what? You can just email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. <sighs> Thank you so much for your time today. We hope to see you all on another webinar in Dealeron's continuing education series. Take care, everyone. Bobby, you are amazing. Bye, guys. <laughs>